Hey, what's up? You guys are watching Pull in the Thread podcast. This is one of the earlier episodes. We've been filming this for a few months now. It's on our membership level. We have three levels of membership. You're watching this video right now, which was filmed probably close to six months ago. We're just starting to trickle them back to the public right now. So if you're interested and you like this content and you want to actually have conversation with us and see this as current event, join the membership. Also remember, I do a live video every night at nine o'clock where you can jump on and we can discuss anything you want. Give him some outro music. Cut that shit off. Something good. Is that Pantera? People always want to know like what you think about Jesus, right? It's it's like because if you if you give them the wrong answer, they can't be friends with you. Yeah, the thing that I find funny is when, when you, the thing I find funny is when you are actually friends with somebody for a long time, and then they, and then you tell them some weird shit like, "Yes, I voted for Donald Trump," and they're like, "Oh my god, I can't be your friend anymore." Well, then we weren't really friends anyways. <laughs> right. yeah. We weren't really friends anyway, so you, no loss. I'm glad to find out you're just a, a weirdo. I don't think people realize what that word means anymore. Yeah, I don't. I mean, it's a it's a tough it's a tough call. Well, I mean, like. My friend. Well, what's your friend's name? When's the last time you saw your friend? Well, I've never really seen my friend. You know what? I, the truth of the matter, like, you're 100% right, is in the fact that the digital world has groomed people into thinking that because someone likes their video or someone friend requests them on Facebook, that somehow they're friends. And the reality is you don't know any of those people, and a lot of them you wouldn't want to be friends with anyways. So I have a dude... That sends me emails every day. He sends me probably, I don't know, 10. And he addresses them to you and I. Mm -hmm. And he sends all this shit over. It's just, I don't even know if we should, I should even talk about it. Like, I'll just print them out and give them to you. And you can, you can decide whether we're going to talk about them or not. Like, if there's a dude's going to show up and, and just serial kill some motherfuckers, no, he's, it's this guy. This, this guy? is the guy. Oh, man. Yeah. You, you're getting, you're, you, he, we, he's not like, I'm going to kill your family. Like you're not getting, yeah. you're not getting the mail I typically get, but he is now, you are now included in my mail. He should, uh, we should send him some candy. We should fly him out here from Alaska. Oh, he's in Alaska. Mm -hmm. No wonder he's crazy. Yeah. He's in Alaska. You can't live in Alaska and not be a little bit crazy. Isn't that kind of like the final frontier though? It is the final frontier. I mean, if you want to, if you want to live outside, I mean, the reality is if you want to live outside the, the grasp States. of the United States government, that's the way to do it because there are places up there that have one state trooper for 100,000 miles. I'm surprised people don't disappear them dudes more. I think I I think when state troopers show up at the, you know, local local village out in the middle of nowhere, they do it in a very big way and cuz I've seen some of the some of the shows and it seems like Everybody, it seems like everybody in town already agreed that John was the big drunk in town, and it's okay if the state troopers arrest him and then leave. That's their tithing. Yeah, that, that, that as long as they, I think it's very announced, and I think they're very specific in what they do, so that the Inuits don't drag him out into the polar bear country and just be like, I don't know what happened to him. Because what what are we going to do? So do you think um, we're seeing politicians being attacked, and and they? They act so surprised um, by it. Which politician would you be referring to, John? Well, I mean, there was there were several on both on both teams, right? There's I mean, been several attacks on politicians lately. I, I can't really, I can't really the the gay couple event that went wrong in San Francisco is not really an attack on a politician. I, I'm with plus you. he's not a politician. They're trying really. to spin it that way. They <laughs> plus are. he's not really a politician. Why? Well, why won't they just release the fucking body cam footage, right? Because <clears throat> who's the third person? The reality is they Who's, have who to. Who did he? Who was in the passenger seat when he got arrested? They're not like that's yeah. a big mystery. Um, the reality is, was it the same dude? Maybe it could have been the same dude. I mean, it really could have been the same dude. I mean, when you have a whole news network agency that comes out and they're like, "It was a Trumpster," and not even a small, not even a little, not even a, not even a little search, a hippie nudist. <laughs> Not only, on. hip, not only hippie nudist. Like, did you, have you seen the interviews with that dude's neighbors? Yeah. 
So, I mean, I don't know. I, I, it's it's one of those things that I think uh, Nancy's husband is into some crazy shit, and he's probably spiraling out of control. Um, this is not the first incident that we've had with him. So, I feel sorry for the, the naked hippie because he's going to go down for something that probably was orchestrated by the, by them. They're probably like, hey, just say this stuff so that we can get out of this mess and then we'll get you out of jail. Well, he's he's not playing along apparently because he pled not guilty. Yeah. Well, you know, he's still got to go into a holding cell with a bunch of other people. I wonder if they'll have him in protective custody. The Pelosi's aren't known for killing their... It's not like the Hillary's. But we'll see. So what's going on this week? What uh, what's your life look like up until today? What'd you what what did you do cool this week? What did I do cool this week? I mean, I, I just I just do things that need to get done. Um, let's pull the front end off the Ford because uh, Curtis brought me a whole new front end, not a new, a used front clip for the Ford, so I can finally fix that. What's wrong? Um, what's wrong with it? The day I was leaving to come out here to Tennessee, I smashed into somebody and fucked up the headlight. It fucked up the headlights, fucked up the bumper. With the big trailer and everything on. Yeah, so I basically bent everything out of the way so the truck would still drive, but the headlights never really worked again. They kind of pointed directly down to the ground. Uh, So I only used the Ford truck for nighttime or for daytime shit. And then Curtis came over a couple... You know, a week ago, and he's like, hey, I know a guy that's got a F-250. I bet I could get the front clip from him. And I'm like, okay. And three days later, he showed up with the whole front clip of a Ford F-1 or Ford F-250. So yesterday I was taking the clip off. I can't, for some reason, I can't figure out how to take the headlights out. I guess I'll watch a YouTube video. And then... Uh, I got a guy that can help you. Did a bunch of work on the... Did some... Work on the Unimog, cows, what else? Church. I mean, it's a it's a full venue. I there's always something to do. There's never I'm now, never just standing around wondering. Like I don't for the unaware. I don't even get to shoot that much anymore because I'm always busy with something. For the unaware, Jeff didn't mean he's going to church. Jeff bought a church. Well, technically, John, you're wrong. I am going to a church. I mean, I am going to a church. I mean. That just he, because that, serv- he, that he owns just and there's because, no service at. Just because there's no services does not mean I'm not going to church. I'm sure that the Lord will create some sort of exception for that. Or maybe not. It is a hundred year old church, so there's gotta be some something going on in there. Is it a historic site? It is not a historic site. But it could be. You just I, I, w- I would assume it. I would assume it could be because it is it is a uh, hundred years hundred years old. Okay, so Everything in the news this week. What what jumps out to you? What stands out? I mean, there's there. This is going to be a week news. This is going to be week for news. Uh, we're going to start seeing a week cycle on news because of the elections. Nobody wants nobody wants the party in power does not want any real domestic bad news to happen, and because our foreign policies are so screwed up because of our current president. They don't want any. They don't want anybody to hear any bad news overseas either. So there's not going to be anything until after the election. After the election, you guys need to strap in because it's going to get really exciting. So the White House came out yesterday and said boots on the ground in Ukraine. Well, the the hundred the hundred first airborne division, not not the whole division, but the hundred first airborne. I don't know how many units they ha- they if it's a battalion or what. Hundred first airborne is confirmed in Poland. Um, the Russians have attacked Polish sites. So you, I hate to say that, I hate to say that your government would do this to you, but it wouldn't surprise me one bit if those 101st airborne guys are around primary Russian targets, hoping that the Russians are going to attack those targets and the U S government can say, look, they attacked us forces, killed these guys. And now we get to go to war because the problem is that most people aren't paying attention to is while the news networks and everybody is talking about how the Russians are getting their ass kicked, strategically, the Russians are not losing any of the things that they actually wanted to grab. The whole run to uh, the capital was 
misguided. But as far as the Donbass and all those areas that they grabbed initially that they really wanted, they're not losing those spots. And they're about to put 300,000 conscripts into the fight. And the Russians know, and so do we, that even 300,000 unwilling fighters is going to be a serious, serious problem for um, Ukraine. They don't have the they don't have the manpower to stop three hundred thousand guys. Even if they're running across the, even if they're running across the field with Mosin and the Gots, they're still gonna um, gonna do some serious damage to the Ukrainian military. And as you've seen within the last week, strategically the Russians have been holding back because this they just started taking out all the power infrastructure within Ukraine. So as soon as the ground is frozen over there, it's gonna be a different fight. So how long until the ground is frozen? Uh, I, you know, I don't know the I don't know the cycle over there. I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be soon, within the next couple of months. And that's because they can now they can move all their trucks. Yeah, well, they can move vehicles. they can move all the heavy vehicles. They don't have to worry about the mud slowing them down anymore. I mean that that was the thing that killed them uh, on this initial evasion is everything was soaking wet, and that's why you saw all those abandoned vehicles because you know a 60 ton tank when it gets stuck in real mud requires some very, very serious equipment to pull out. And you can only pull out so many tanks before you just have to leave tanks behind. And that's why the Ukrainians were able to capture so much vehicles. Now, I mean, the Russians did abandon a lot of good shit, but they pulled back to the places where they were intending to hold anyway. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. That's all the... The serious stuff. I mean, uh, so what about Korea launching missiles at each other? Oh, uh, yeah. He. I mean, he's trying to stay relevant. So South Korea launched, and North Korea they just exchanged. Yeah. Where did they? Where they overshoot each other? Where they go? I think they were just. I think it was just like, hey, I, I'm still here. I have missiles, and they, he fired his. It's not. The, it's not South Korea. It's never South Korea that's the issue. Um, South Korea is ready to fight North Korea, and I believe if the United States would get out of their way, South Korea would stomp North Korea into the fucking Stone Age. Um, we are the ones that are always telling South Korea to f- stop. Why do, you think, why do you think that is? Uh, I think because we don't want to get dragged into a, a conflict on the continent. Because you know, if the North, if South Korea crosses that parallel, we go with them. Um, it's not. South Korea that you need to pay attention to, it's Japan. That's why um, whenever North Korea fires a missile, it always goes into the Sea of Japan. Because what they're trying to do is get Japan to be like, enough is enough, we're going to come over and we're going to stomp your guts out. <laughs> um, which, Why do they want that? Uh, because that, that gives them a reason to start a real war. South, they, North Korea. Yeah, it gives them a reason to start a real war. They can't really, I mean, they can, but there's too much cross-pollination going on in South Korea and North Korea. Like, they just, uh, they didn't just do it, but it's been going on for a while where they're recapitulating families, mm-hmm. where they're allowing families to go back and forth across the border. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's a lot of cross-pollination, and it's easier. it's easier to... It's easier to start a war if you can blame it on somebody else. Why would North Korea want to go to war with them? Because uh, their their country is a piece of shit. I mean, their 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 country is solely based off of war footing, and when you base all your industry and everything off of war footing, you have millions of people starved to death. You have you have all kinds of crazy shit going on, and they have all kinds of crazy shit going on. I mean, like you really can. I don't know what what that movie was with. Uh, you really can't go to North Korea where they have fake storefronts with pictures of oranges and apples and shit. That seems to be a lot of bins. China. In the bins. Well, you know, China, they have entire fake cities. Right. And the like the facades. <laughs> yeah. There's two dudes that were from, uh, I think they were South African, right around on motorcycles. Motorcycles, yeah. And they'll be standing in these huge cities, like these just magnificent cities. And the facades, like it's plaster of Paris. It's literally just sloughing off. The whole front, yeah, they're made. They're made like of paper mache. Yeah, the Chinese have uh, the Chinese have figured out a way to keep their economy going by building things that never get used. So as long as as long as uh, they can keep those construction workers working and the government can pay those construction workers, they'll just keep building fake cities and then tearing fake. There was just a big last weekend. There was a big uh, big video going around about um, a whole fucking city. 
like a big city that the Chinese were just blowing up, demolishing, like mega, like down to like the ground, Las Vegas, where no shit. one ever, where no one ever lived in. And there, there are cities, like major metropolitan cities over there, that they have built where there's like four people living in them. So they have these fake police officers on the corner and shit. They're like these robot cops, and everything's it's like slow down. And like when you walk up to them, there's it's not like all the people you see and shit. They're not real people. They're mannequins and shit. It's, it's a trip. There's these dudes that just drive around China and they just get out and videotape these things. And it's never what it appears to be. Like they have these like photo opportunity places for tourists, but you can only shoot it in this direction, direction yeah. because there's a screen behind there. And when you pan to the side, you see just how much smog it's fucking crazy. Yeah. If you're a YouTuber and you go over there and you're going to do like a, a Chinese puff piece, they will assign you, a party member and that party member is going to be very friendly and excited to show you around. And they show you all the things that they want, that China wants you to see. But then in the background, there's always four. I mean, it, it would, they would probably be like the CIA, but there's always four other agents that are just following around to make sure that you don't take a picture of something that China doesn't want to take a picture of. One of these dudes there at this like wildlife reserve or something. And they had done all this dirt work and shit. And they were saying how, um, this bird that's almost extinct, China has revitalized nature and everything. So all these birds have come back, but only to China. So what it is, is they're actually feeding them. They're feeding them all these little dead fish. So they kind of stay in this area, but there was like four or five of them would come up and actually eat. And the rest of them were just like mannequins. They weren't real fucking birds. It's, it's a trip. Yeah. That's the, that's the problem you have with your communist ideology. It's very hard to maintain in the long run. So all you, sorry, Brandel, all you liberals that want to uh, socialize everything, in the long run, you're just going to be food. So, I mean. So, I th- do you know what uh, BTS is? It's a Korean boy brand. Oh, yeah, yeah, brand. Korean boy brand. Yeah, it's a, it's apparently they're all, grueling. They've all been drafted, apparently. But it's apparently pretty grueling to get into. Like, it's like, it's like going, like, if you want to be a... In those, in those bands, it's like joining the NFL. Like you, isn't it like like Menudo, right? It always changes when you when you're not 16, your voice changes when you hit 17, and you're not in the band no more. School. So in South Korea, in school, they'll actually give you the option to quit going to public school and join into going into K-pop school. K-pop, that's what it's called. Yeah. Lord, it's, Lord, is that you? It's like, um, isn't that like the uh, the Vatican? They would just castrate boys so yes. that they would stay yep. uh, they high would pitch castrate voice. So they high, high pitch. But I, but that K-pop, I'm from what I understand is it's a it's like a grueling like the, it's not it's not like our music industry where our musicians go out and create a subculture that follows them around and attacks them on stage and they get to trash their hotel room and go on a destructive rant with drugs and alcohol over there. It's the government doing it to the K-pop guys making their lives, you know, pretty structured. So they got drafted. So every South Korean oh, person yeah, yeah, yeah. has to, has go to serve, and serve their, before the age sorry. of 32, I think. So BTS, which is the biggest band in the entire world. Um, the oldest member is 30 and He has to serve his two years now. Um, South Korea was trying to get them not to serve, but they wanted to because everybody else does. And it was kind of like it was up in the air. Uh, The question would be, the question would be, Brandel, was at the time that these BTS guys were like, hey, we're going to join the military, was Korean conscript levels down? Because... They might have just been using these guys as a way to get their conscript levels up. Same way that our military during Korea used Elvis Presley. Like, yeah, so they are they are bigger than the Beatles. Yeah. They are bigger than Elvis. Like they're the biggest thing that's ever That's what I'm saying happened. is you have you have this you have this group of you have this group that is idolized by all these young teens and if your conscript levels are low, you just get them to be like, "Yeah, we're signing up. 
we're going to war. It, it could be. And then everybody's like, oh, I want to join too. I mean, that's that's yeah. all. That's the only reason why Elvis Presley was drafted is to get people to go to Korea. And any time between the age of 18 to 32 or 30, you can serve. So you can pick when you want to go. But Elvis Presley actually did go, right? No, yeah. Elvis Elvis signed up and everything. But I, I guarantee you that there was a serious level discussion at the time when his name came up for the draft board. And they were like, what are we going to do? It's Elvis Presley. You can't you there's a certain amount of heroism that you can't destroy in the United States. It's like it's like when somebody gets a medal of honor. It's very rare that they're going to get a second medal of honor. It does happen, but it's very rare because you don't want to be the commander who gets a medal of honor winner killed. So, if someone is a living recipient of a medal of honor, it's not likely that they are going to be in harm's way ever again because you don't want to be the guy that gets him killed because he's a Medal of Honor winner. So they tend to take those guys and put them somewhere where their where their Medal of Honor can be used for recruitment and motivational purposes, but not usually in harm's way. It does happen, but usually not in harm's way. Same thing with Elvis. I guarantee you they were like, okay, if we can get Elvis to join the army, we'll tell him, hey, bro, you're not going to go to Korea. We're going to keep you somewhere safe because we know that young kids are going to join the army solely because Elvis Presley's in the army. And they did that. They sent him to damn Germany as a clerk or something. No, he was a, he was in a real, he was in a real unit. He was in a tank platoon. He was in a tank battalion, I guess, tank battalion, really drove a tank, really did all that army stuff, but they never went to Korea. And I promise you that the guys, when Elvis Presley showed up to, um, when Elvis Presley showed up to that battalion, everybody in that battalion went, shit, we ain't going to Korea. <laughs> Cause you, you, you don't want to, you know, the president doesn't want, or you know, somebody that famous, you don't want that guy killed in something like Korea. I mean, it'd be different if it was, if it'd be different if it was a world war, famous people did go fight in world war two. They all volunteered. And that makes it a lot different. Um, but in something small like Korea, the last thing you want the home front to be worried about is Elvis Presley died in Korea. N- nobody's going to, nobody's going to volunteer to go to Korea. You want that, you want that celebrity to give you more, uh, more recruits. So I know that's very cynical, but yes, your government is very cynical. They do that stuff all the time. So have you seen, um, they're using the Navy. Well, well, what it started off as is that the United States Navy is being used to enforce uh, fishing lanes, uh, enforce, I guess, catch limits on Chinese ship uh, sh- <laughs> fishing vessels, right? And then the speculation is, so they're doing like visit board search seizure. They're doing VBSS stuff on these boats. And they come up to this group of boats. I think it was 20, 30 of these things. And then as the story goes on, it was actually the Coast Guard with some other unnamed entity. So they're, they're boarding these, but the speculation was that these shipping, these fishing boats are not, in fact, fishing boats, right? Every, every boat being made out of China can be used as a, a warship yeah, or a warship. Short transport or whatever. But they set up, they've actually completely canceled some kind of crab fishing a lot of countries have because these crabs have just completely disappeared. And they don't, like, talking to the ecologists or whoever, they're like, we don't know if they just, like, were all marching one direction and fell in a canyon. And then they're like, well, maybe the Chinese have been over here and they're overfishing our fishing lanes. So they're trying to enforce this. And the Chinese fishermen were like, fuck you guys. And they just, like, scattered. So they couldn't catch them. So they only were able to catch three out of, like, the 30. So it's this, supposed to be this big embarrassment. So they're, they're, they're like, you have... 30 days to find out who these were and turn these people in. And it's just kind of a, a big thing. I heard about it very briefly, but it, it sounded kind of interesting. Did you hear anything about it? Uh, I, I didn't. I heard about the, the uh, crabbers complaining that the crabs have just disappeared. Um, but the Chinese, the uh, Chinese fishing fleets are notorious for attacking other fishing boats. So like there's a big beef in the Philippine sea, uh, the sea surrounding the Philippines, Chinese and Filipino uh, fishing vessels go toe to toe all the time, ramming each other, doing all kinds of crazy shit. It would not surprise me if 
that is why the U.S. Navy is trying to enforce some of these fishing things because of what's going on in the Philippine in the Philippine Sea. And you know, the reality is the Chinese are running. The Chinese are just picking a spot in the middle of the ocean and pouring sand until they make an island, and then they're like, "This is our island." Yeah, they're making <laughs> air bases, so runways. And I mean. Shit. The, the Chinese are going to have to get checked eventually because you cannot have a one world government if the Russians, Chinese, and Iran still exist. Um, you have to get rid of those three entities. Uh, Russia is doing it to itself in Ukraine. Iran, as you if you've been paying attention, is having a serious, serious uh, meltdown right now um, over the fem- the hijabs or uh, over over a young lady who was killed there. Um, it's it's interesting. It's always about. Whenever there's, whenever there's change, it's always about the right person for the change. Uh, example would be Rosa Parks. Rosa Parks was not the first black female who was who was made to move to the back of the bus, um, but she was the right one. So that's how that movement started. Same thing in in Iran. This this young lady who was killed by the police. She is not the first young lady who's been killed by the police over there. Uh, to the contrary, there's been hundreds, but this was the one that got everybody off their couch. And so, like the, they're talking about. You think it's the right person or right time? Uh, it could be right time, um, but the 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 security forces over there. There, I saw a bunch of pictures recently where they're like, they they're they're dressing up children in security uniforms and using them in the background to make it look like there's more security forces there than. But I mean. First time, first time in a long time, security officers are going down the street and people are beating the shit out of them. So uh, it's going to be real tough. It's going to re- be real tough for Iran to uh, reel this back in. The mullahs are really going to have to think about how they're going to how they're going to keep control. Um, so there's your two. China's the only one left. And as you as you know, uh, the Biden administration has started ramping up its rhetoric against China. So. Might not be too long before we have to do something about China, and then you can, you know, then the Rockefellers and the Vanderbilts and they can all get together and you think decide the fate of the world. Um, the Biden administration being well, hard the, on China because I mean the Biden it, the, it, does it not seem that they're all making a ton of money off of that? Yes, and and I mean all all the like the the Uyghur Muslim stuff, right? That's that's who's building all of the iPhones yep. and everything that's happening, all the organ harvesting, all that shit. The the interest, I mean, it, it is interesting to think that way that the Biden administration, like when you, or you think politicians in general, they're making money off of the Chinese, they're making money off pretending that they're patriots or whatever. Um, but it, it's no different than any other time in history that a politician, that politicians are two faced and would take money from the Chinese and then declare war on them the next day. I mean, it's, as long as the as long as the politicians' coffers are full of money, they don't care. I mean, Walt Disney was still in Germany in '38. Um, we were still Hollywood was still in Germany at the same time, and they all knew what was going on in Germany. So, have you ever heard of a book called uh, IBM and the Holocaust? Uh, I have not heard of that. So I have it. It's not on audiobooks, but the book it's it's pretty wild, man. And if you if you just Google that. For anybody listening, you will find Glenn Beck actually had a 90-minute interview with the author. <clears throat> and he laid out how instrumental IBM was in what they did and how they cataloged all those people. And they actually had an international business machine. That's what IBM stood for. And they had a 10,000-foot building. This, this building here is 10,000 feet. And they had a 10,000-foot building with an IBM machine controlled by IBM people that manned these things at every one of the camps. They all had these things. He said he went over there a hundred times during the war or something. Um, General Motors was involved with it, and Ford Motor was involved with it, and Coca-Cola, and just everybody knew. Like, and, and to say that they didn't know, it's like they were there at the camps. And I mean, maybe it was hidden from them, maybe, whatever, but somebody fucking knew. Well, like, uh, for example, um, a good example would be like Hollywood. They were still making movies in Germany after Germany declared war and attacked Poland. And you can't say that they didn't know what was going on because the Germans actually came in and said, 
every person working here of Jewish descent can no longer work here. We can't, you can't right, produce they expelled them. They expelled them. So it wasn't like Hollywood didn't know. But at the time, we were still going through the Depression here in the United States, and Hollywood was making more money in Europe than they were making in the United States. So they went right along with it. I mean, you, when it comes to when it comes to those types of uh, financial gains, people play the ends against the middle all the time. I mean, they do it all the time, and the, and politically, you know, it's even worse for politicians. I mean, it's it's not a lie when people say that that U.S. steel was used to bomb Pearl Harbor. Our government sold them the good, the raw goods necessary for them to make the equipment that they used to sink the ships at Pearl Harbor. Uh, we did cut them off eventually, but that, that was after we were only sure that we couldn't make any more money off the Japanese. So, I mean, it, it's, it's a, it's a crapshoot, you know, when people, you know, it's like, uh, we went to Iraq for oil. We don't get any oil from Iraq. We made all our money off of this, off of the strategic equipment that we sold to all the allies after that war. I mean, billions and billions of dollars in military equipment was sold to the Saudi Arabian government. So Saudi Arabia just came out, I guess, in the last couple of days and said they have a credible threat that Iran is planning to launch nuclear weapons or use a nuclear bomb of some sort. Will it be an Israeli jet flying? Against, against the United States? Uh, first off, they don't have the they don't have the technology. The reality is the Iranians don't have the technology to have a missile that would actually be able to make it to the United States. They don't do missile tests. It's not like North Korea. They don't do missile tests. They don't have. I mean, every time they do a centrifuge, the only people worried about Iran in the big scheme of things is Israel, because. They are the they are the ones that Iran really hates is Israel. So if Israel, the reality is, let's say Israel had, let's say secretly out in the desert somewhere they made two nuclear weapons, and they had an opportunity to use those two nuclear weapons. I've seen this movie. The they're not gonna sh- they're not gonna try and shoot them at the United States. They're they're just not. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. They're not gonna sneak them in a backpack. Bring a ship into some harbor anywhere and destroy, you know, Los Angeles, whatever. They don't. They wouldn't be effective enough to do anything that would keep us from totally turning that entire country into a glass pond. Um, but if they had two nuclear weapons, and they used them on Israel. Israel is small enough that they could make that state no longer viable, um, and the Israelis know this, and that is why every time the, the every time Iran gets close to. Even with even with uh, Obama buddying up to the Iranians, every time they get close, the Israelis do some shit that destroys their centrifuge or kills their nuclear scientists or all that stuff is Israel. They don't they they don't having Iran having a nuclear weapon is not viable for them. So, so why why have they not been able to fuck Israel up? Well, the Iron Dome thing, or no, Israel's just technologically more advanced than any of those other countries. You know, it's it's real hard to be when you are a uh, when you are authoritarian government. While it seems like it would be easy to create all kinds of cool shit, you don't really create cool shit unless you have people who are willing to create the cool shit. You can't, you can't for. I mean, you to a certain extent you can with some things. But you can't force it. If you try and force technology, then it, it's never any good. That's why you don't see you you know. It's why you don't see like North Korea coming out with a, a cell phone that everybody's like, oh my god, have you seen the North Korean cell phone? It's the best thing ever. Forget Apple. Let's go with the North. Or or we're like, you don't ever hear about anybody going, oh my god, the Chinese the Chinese stealth fighter is the best in the world. What you do hear them saying is it's close to ours. It's pretty good, but it's not as good as ours. And it's because we allow the Chinese to steal that technology. Do we allow it or do oh, we, we sell it? We allow it. <laughs> we allow it. You don't think somebody's profiting from that? Yeah, that's why we allow it. We allow it because let's say you're Northrop Grumman and you build the stealthiest stealth fighter in the world. And we buy 5,000 of them and we have them for six years. Well, it's time for Northrop Grumman to make more money. 
So the only way they're going to make more money is if they go, the Chinese have something that's pretty close to ours. Um, we, need to, we need to build a new fighter jet. It's like, it's like the tank, the M1 Abrams. Yeah, it took, how, how fucking old it is took, that thing? Yeah, the, the M1 Abrams is old, but techno- technology-wise, it took everybody else about 40 years to catch up to the M1 Abrams. And so now we're building new tanks. Um, so it's just... Oh, shit. Yeah. It's, it's just about, you know, you want, you, want, uh, you want people to be allowed to be as creative as possible. The minute you start stifling creation, then you've, you've, lost, the, you've lost the battle. Have you seen that? Hel- they had some helicopter that was fucking way better than the Apache. Oh, I, and there was some shenanigans around it, so they shut it down, and they ended up going with the Apache. Yeah, I have seen that. Uh, it was the God. What was the name of that helicopter? I have actually seen that. Seen that video, and that helicopter was really cool looking. Yeah, <laughs> it was yeah. really cool looking. But the you just never know the behind the scenes of all that. It's like uh, it's like the Bradley fighting vehicle. Yeah, you know, if you ever watch any of the 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 Pentagon papers about that Bradley fighting vehicle, it complete soup sandwich and bullets you, went straight through it. You end up getting you end up getting what you get eventually when it comes to government contracts. But it was it was again stifling innovation. It was the government telling industry what they wanted instead of having the in, instead of just giving them a vague description and being like, "Hey, this is what we need. We need something that we can carry troops around in that's armored." that will be relevant on the battlefield. Industry will come up with some crazy shit if you do that. But if you're like, it has to have four road wheels, it has to have, you know, this type of machine gun on it, it has to have, then you're never going to get, you're never going to get the thing that you really, really want. So. So didn't Iran used to be super, you know, beautiful and it was like a vacation destination in yes. like the seventies and even the eighties. In, in the seventies, in the seventies, they had uh, the, the problem is everybody was free and women could show their face. And the, the problem is it was a it was a it was truly a puppet government of the or a puppet regime of the United States, and you have to have the you have to have the at least belief of democracy. If people do not believe that democracy is being done, then eventually they are going to overthrow their government. And that's what happened. The, the, the Shah of Iran was not going to give up any power and ruled with an iron fist, and that's how he got overthrown. Chile or Brazil, what's going on in Brazil right now? Oh, Brazil, Brazil went totally red. So they're trying to make, it, they're trying to make it sound like Trump, right? Yeah, not he, communist, he but they're... The, the bad guy got elected, or the... the the Democrat got elected, basically, and the current sitting president, who, who this guy had been had some charges on him and shit, and they mm-hmm. kicked him out or whatever. And the the other politician has not declared a loss, so they're they're trying to align it and make it sound like Trump. And they're trying to turn yeah. it into a January sixth thing. So what what's the real deal over there? The the real deal is the same thing that's happening all over the all over Europe right now is you can't. You can't enforce your will on an entire population with mask mandates and lockdowns and and people losing their jobs. And then you come out of that and immediately what you do is you create inflation that makes their livelihoods no longer affordable and then expect that you're going to stay in power. I mean, that's the problem. If this, it would be... The well, reality is... that happen here right now. Yeah, the reality is even, even if, if, let's say... Let's say the Republican, let's say Trump had won, right? Trump had won in the re- elections and the Republicans were holding everything. If we would have had the same, you know, the same four years under Trump again and under Republicans, there would be a blue, there would be a blue wave. We'd be sweeping all the Republicans underneath the carpet because you can't, you can't make people uncomfortable and then be like, hey, will you reelect me? No, you guys are idiots. Why would we reelect you? I mean, Biden can't even get a deal from the Saudis. Biden can't even get a deal from the Saudis for increasing oil production. They exist only on the example that America runs the world. I mean, the minute the minute the Saudis, the minute the Saudi crown prince and they don't have our protection, they're getting rumbled. They are done. So what's their advantage to not increasing oil? Why why did they do that? 
they're punishing us. Are for, they punishing us or yeah, are they they're, punishing this administration? I mean, you could say they're punishing this administration, but um, when Trump was president, there was actually a war going on between the Saudis and the Russians. Uh, and that is why the fuel prices actually went down as low as they did because the Russians, the Saudis were trying to control how much oil was being pumped into the world. And the Russians were like, nope, we're going we're gonna to pump as much as we want. And so the Saudis were like, fine, we're going to out pump you. And that is why across the globe, oil prices went down as low as they did because they were, they were competing against each other. And then Trump became president and he was like, Hey, we have all this oil here in the United States. Why don't we start becoming energy independent and start pumping our own oil? So that ramped up oil production in the United States and when that happened, and w- the minute we became energy independent, Russians and the Saudis were like, hey, we have to stop this. We have to stop this in order to get uh, the United States back on the tit. Because the reality is we use a lot of oil. Which is better for you and I. Uh, energy independence is better than for you and I. Energy independence is always better. Um the Biden administration made a serious mistake because they're listening to people who have no skin in the game and they're going to lose very badly because of it. Um, but energy independence is the way to go. Like he, he could have pushed all his, he literally could have pushed every liberal agenda he wanted. If he would have kept energy independence, it, it'd be a real problem for the, it would be a real problem for the Republicans to win any of these elections. People don't realize that oil companies are no longer oil companies they're energy companies. Yeah. And every oil company out there is involved in the, the wind energy and the, yeah, yeah. it's, it's all the same fucking people. Like go look at California. They incentivized everybody to get solar panels. And now that everybody has solar panels, you know who controls those lines? SDG and E. Yeah. There's no buyback. So you're going to get taxed. You're, you're coming to a point where you're going to start getting taxed for the energy that you produce. It, it's the same people becoming rich over and over again. Do you remember in the 80s, like around Tierra Santa where I was, so I'm sure Santee, Lakeside, yeah. all that had it. Do you remember those big black boxes that were on everybody's roof that created hot water? Like oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember yeah. that? Uh-huh. And then all of a sudden, just after a few years, those things were gone. Nobody asked why. Nobody knew where they went. They worked incredibly well Mm -hmm. nicole has one on her house yeah and she literally uses i think a tenth of the propane in her house since putting that thing up there now she can't like do laundry and take a shower and run the dishwasher at the same time so there's some you have to juggle it around but but it works right but that's that whole solar panel thing and the solar panels shit we've had solar panels they've they've this huge push has been going on for at least 20 years in california they're saying the life of these things is 30 years maybe. So now the big thing is where do we put them? Just like the wind turbine blades. We talked about that on a, a, pod, a live feed we did yesterday was the turbines. Those things, you, you can only move one of those fucking blades down the interstate at a time. And the, it's 120 feet long. So you have a truck with some wheels and then you have some wheels attached at the back end. And they're burying these things. And Bear, I heard Bear saying that they put these wind turbines up, but they have to work on them every couple of years, and it, and it, they don't break even. Now, Spearco said something a little different. He said, you know, when it, he said they break even after three years, and I heard Bear saying, if you add in the concrete and all of the diesel that it took to make the concrete and harvest, if you add everything in there, it takes 18 years or 30 years to pay for these things, and they expire at 18. At 18, the whole thing's done for. Like, you can't even use it. Yeah, I know that the uh, the first the first um, windmill farm in California, out there by Palm Springs, when they set that in, um, my grandfather actually was an electrician and he worked for the guy who who did that, and that was the big thing back then was they were going to make zero money, but the tax write off and incentives for them to put these things up were worth every bit of it. So the gov- basically the government was paying to put these damn windmills up, and then you as a you know you as a multimillionaire would get to take these crazy tax write offs because you put these windmill farms up when they weren't really producing enough energy to it's the same thing if you if you do any research about that big uh, the big solar farm that they put out there on the California 
border and uh, Arizona border, Nevada border, uh, outside of Las Vegas. They're losing money every day. <laughs> they're losing money every day. The all these all these quick fix energy devices that people are pretending are going to save the planet are in the long run going to be more devastating to the planet. It's it's the plastic bag again. We got rid of paper bags, which, by the way, were 100% renewable, so we could have plastic bags. Now plastic bags are a complete fucking nightmare, and they're contributing to all the microplastic in the ocean. I know it comes from water bottles and all that other stuff, but the plastic bags break down much faster in the ocean, so they're creating more microplastic. That is going to be an ecological disaster that we're going to have to deal with. Same thing with all this other stuff. Uh, uh, Tesla is going to need a new battery in 10 years, guys. And the battery costs more than the car. So why total them out. So why would you put a new battery in it? You're not going to. You're going to total that thing out. And guess what they can't do? They can't do anything with any of that any of that stuff that's in those batteries. So they're going into the damn dump. It's same thing with solar panels. Solar panels at their end of their lifespan, they have no recyclable capability and they're going into the dump. You know, it's we are creating a disaster, a super disaster that um, is completely avoidable with, you know, people really saying, hey, is this, is this really going to help us in the long run? Because it's not. I mean, a $65,000 uh, car is not going to help us when you have a maid that has to travel 70 miles into Hollywood to vacuum up, you know, the local celebrity's house. So $65,000 is the entry level. The one you want is one hundred and sixty thousand. Yeah, I mean, if you want a really good one, you know, if you want, if you want the Joe Rogan Pierre's experience, has, Pierre's you got three of them. You got to do it. He has one currently, and it's great because she she drives a mile to work. Right? There's something wrong with every one of them. Like they've had to take them back, and Tesla had his shit for I think two three weeks every time. I I hear that a lot. There's just some bullshit. The windows hissing or it makes noise. There's always something wrong with all of these things. I mean, they're, it's a, it's a, it's one of those tough calls. I think it, I think it's like, um, it's like, uh, the cricket, the, the cricket meal that they're going to be feeding us in the future. So you have shit at Walmart right now on the shelf that you have bought it, for yeah, the last 20 years it. Has, and it doesn't say now with improved cricket meal. It's not disclosed. It's just in tiny fine print. But I mean, it's, it's like the cricket meal. I think, a, I think a Tesla are not, I mean, don't get me wrong. They're bitching cars. But a Tesla is like a cricket meal. It's like a block of cricket meal. And they take all this cool frosting, and they <laughs> spray it all over the cricket meal, and then they take some more frosting, and they spray it on top of that, and then they put some fruit on top of that, and they give it to you, and you're like, man, all this stuff is cool. It makes the cricket meal taste bearable. Because, I mean, that's how they do it. The thing about the Tesla car, the reason why people love them is because of all the technology that they put into that car. It makes it fun. But it doesn't mean that 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 car in the long run is going to be better you can recycle almost i want to say almost 90 percent if you if you really tried almost 90 percent of a gas burning car they've already figured out how to do all that because we've been playing with it all the time it's the same thing with your like your uh your lead acid batteries all your lead acid batteries get recycled so have you seen the guys in india that take them apart and pull the plates out and shit and rebuild them and everything that's the crazy part, and that's that's part of you know a lot of our our e waste. A lot of our e waste goes places that we don't care about. So you know if you're in the Congo, you might get some really horrific e waste that your kids are going to be pulling through, trying to get little pieces of gold connectors or whatever off of. Um, that's the, that's the problem with the liberal agenda. Is the liberal agenda they're okay with any type of technology as long as the destruction and the waste goes somewhere else. You know, it's it's like nuclear power. I'm not necessarily for nuclear power, but the reality is if you really cared about um, the planet, nuclear power is probably the better way to go. They've got some completely safe nuclear power now, apparently. it's been The technology has been around for 10, 15 years. Everybody says safe until there's a problem. And that's well, it, the only that's the only thing I have that's the only problem I have with nuclear power is everybody says safe until there's a problem. Like um 
the reactors at San Onofre, uh, the reactors at San Onofre, when they put those reactors in the, the Japanese company, they were the safest reactors that you could possibly have. And yet they still, San Onofre still had leaks and still had problems because you're talking about human interaction. So maybe when AI takes over and they wipe us all out, that AI is going to fire up all these nuclear power plants and they're going to work perfect and the Jetsons will be able to fly around in their in their AI cars and do all kinds of cool shit. But well, the AI won't have; they won't be affected. By yeah, the we have too many. We we have too much. We have too much of our own frailty involved in whenever we're doing anything. Like, for example, a nuclear power plant. A nuclear power plant has to be regulated to the T. And when it starts costing those companies money, like SDG&E with San Onofre, when it starts costing those companies money, they're going to cut corners. Isn't SDG&E and, completely offline now? I mean, um, San Onofre? Yeah, San Onofre is completely offline. Just a, it's just they're a relic. Just, they're just, yeah, they're, they're actually uh, taking it apart. Um, so, uh, but you, you put in that human frailty, and the human frailty is if it's costing, if it, if it costs too much, to fix the crack in the wall the way it's supposed to be fixed, just get some toothpaste and run the toothpaste in there and smear it around and nobody's going to see the crack in the wall. That's the kind of shit that humans do, and that's why nuclear power is so dangerous because it irradiates, you know, if you have a real meltdown, you're losing hundreds of thousands of square foot of land. So if they if we could figure out a way for aliens to come down if like if aliens came down and like hey we figured out how to run these things we're going to fire one up for you and we're going to run it for you i would be all for it so what about all the every time there's going to be some shit going on around a nuclear facility or there's about I would to be still, a, or there's about to be we're about to launch nuclear missiles ufo's show up and prevent it have you heard any of that no i haven't heard you any haven't any heard that. none of that uh-uh. Yeah, there's a bunch of shit around there. I mean, I still would drive my uh, diesel truck everywhere, even if I had to secretly make diesel in my garage. So you and people right. ask, they're like, why don't you get a Tesla and the charge wall? And I like the idea of the charge wall. I don't like it. I don't, I don't give a shit about solar being better for the environment. I like solar because when, when Cletus next door or wherever, when he don't have power, I still have fucking power. That's why I like the idea of solar. Just like we were talking about mm-hmm. running the mini split off of it. I mean, it's a great... It's a great, I, okay, so all these things, like when you talk about wind power and you talk about solar power and you talk about batteries, there are individuals out there that are completely running zero, you know, zero emissions, right? There are people out there that live in their house and they have solar panels and wind and hydro or whatever, they have all that. The problem is when you try and scale that up, it's it's easy it's easy for 10 people to go, hey, guess what we're going to do? We're going to put up this solar farm over here, and we're going to run our neighborhood off this solar farm. 10 people can do that. But when you're talking about 333 million people all needing the same amount of power, you can't scale it up with fucking solar. We'd have to cover the moon in solar panels, and that's just the United States. Same thing with wind. Every square inch of the United States would have to be covered with fucking wind turbines to fix the power needs of 330 million people. Now, if you're Bill Gates, the problem is not how much power. The problem is the 330 million people. And that's why that's why the Bill Gates Foundation and all them, it's about population reduction. Well, they've killed a fucking ton of population. I mean, <laughs> it's all about population at, reduction because look at Africa, look at India, look at what the fucking is the prime minister, whoever, uh, whoever's in charge of India, man, you should, you should look up what he said about the Bill Gates foundation and the, the polio. Like they, they put a hundred thousand doses in there and fucking gave 40,000 people polio, like within six months of fucking receiving the vaccination or something. And you have to be really curious on why, a billionaire billionaire. I guess Bill Gates is a billionaire. Why billionaires would get into social events or doing social structuring. It's only for their benefit. They're not Bill Gates. Don't give two shits about who's starving in Africa because the reality is he has the structure and network to fix it, but he makes more money pretending that he's doing anything. So why? Why why would you why would you fix a problem that you're making money off of? So is it insidious? Uh I, I, I don't I mean 
outside of Elon Musk, because I think Elon is actually an alien. He's not really from here. I don't think you could be that wealthy and not be insidious. I just, I don't know. I mean, maybe, I mean, I want to say that Bezos seems a little too childlike to be that insidious, but then Bezos has done everything that Dr. Evil has done. I mean, even his, even even his spaceship, even his spaceship looks exactly like Dr. Evil's spaceship. So like a dick. Yeah. So maybe, so maybe even Bezos is evil to a certain extent, uh, you know, and I don't know. It's, it's just very interesting. I don't, I don't know how you could, I don't know how you could amass that much wealth and not, not feel like that you are smarter than everybody else. And because you're smarter than everybody else, you know, what's good for everybody else and you're going to fix their problems. Well, that's not. Yeah. And fixing their problems is never (laughs) better for their life. It's never. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta take that with a grain of salt. It usually means, it usually means serious modification of your lifestyle and not his, not his. I mean, you know, the reality is Bill Gates is the biggest pusher of fake meat. He's the biggest pusher of fake meat, fake fish. So that's all tanking. Yeah. Well, 100%, I guarantee you never, ever see Bill Gates take a piece of fake meat and put it in his mouth. There, He's still going to be eating steak. So they had, I, I heard yesterday, I was on a video with Nicole and Jack Spirko, Nicole Sauce and Jack Spirko, and Jack had said that four or five... um Beyond Meat is it is that the big one? Beyond Meat, mm-hmm. it's completely tanked. They're even pulling it out of they've they've reduced the section in Whole Foods. There used to be like three aisles, and they've they've pulled out fucking like seventy percent of this shit. People aren't buying it. There's it's not working. Yeah, it, it can't work. It, it can't work because of the because of the idiotic mentality of the people that work that industry. Um, you want you want people to eat plant based food. You want them to eat plant based food. You want feed, them to stop? F- feed it to cows first. No, uh, you want them to stop eating a lot of meat? Then what you do is you make healthy, plant-based food alternatives. And people will go to that. People will go to healthy, plant-based alternatives. You know it's not healthy. You know whatever they're cooking up is not healthy if they have to call it meat. Right. If, if, they're, if they have to be like, hey, meatless chicken nuggets. Tastes well, just like yeah, just tastes, tastes just, just like, like chicken hamburger. nuggets or taste just like hamburger. Then I know that you have processed you have processed whatever that is to such a level that it there can't be anything healthy in it anymore. So why would I? So I, I do have, have a theory on Burger King though. Go ahead, and this goes for you, Burger this is King. The ultimate burger. The yeah, this burger. this goes to you, Burger King in uh, Waverly, Tennessee. Dude, Camden's the worst fucking Burger King in the world. Well, Waverly, Tennessee. See. I like me a, a burger from Burger King I like, every now and then. I like, that's my favorite fast food is Whopper. From, from every Whopper now and then. Cheese. Yeah. For every but, now and then, I oh, like a Whopper. Holy shit. Uh-oh. I got to pee anyways. Are you on? Are you listening, Lord? Okay. Can you turn my, uh, turn my, turn the snare up? Uh, turn my trouble me, down. Can you give me a check? Count me in. My check? Check, check, check. One, two, check, check. I like that. It needs to be higher, though, because... Anyways, okay. So we were talking about Burger King and uh, Beyond Beyond Meat, and then I know this for a fact. I mean, I don't know it for a fact. I haven't I haven't fact checked it. But my Burger King, if you go if you go at the first of the month, and you get a burger from them, it tastes exactly the way you remember it. Like it's it I've tastes had, good. Yeah, we we have literally it, it tastes good. We've gone to Burger King, get the food, and we're like. Literally take a bite of it and just throw it away. You're like, yeah, you, what in the fuck? First of the month, you go, you get a burger. It tastes great. End of the month, you go, it just tastes funny. Like, it doesn't taste the way it's supposed to. It tastes funny. And I know. I'm saying they're putting that other bullshit. Yeah, in. they're putting the Beyond Meat in. Well, think about it. Just just, just think about this for a second. it's not selling, you think? Yeah, it's not selling. They're, they run out of regular patties, and they're like, who's going to know? Why? Because... It's a chain store, so the guy who owns it has to buy, like, I don't know. I don't know what he has to buy, but he buys 500 regular hamburger patties from Burger King, Inc., and then Burger King, Inc.'s like, hey, man, we got these Beyond Burger patties for half off. You want to buy some of these? And so he buys you would think that would get 300 of those. Somehow. 
And then he just slides them in there. So you know the steakhouse we went to all the time up in Jackson? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Flatter? Yeah. Or was so I we supposed to say that? I wasn't going to say it, but that's okay. okay. So we we went there every week, would you say? Every... At least, every, well, yeah, right. we, pretty close, we, pretty we, close every week. So we'd go up there and, and spend a lot of money, and for we something happened. We just stopped going, right? We didn't go for a couple of years, went back, and we ate there, and the service wasn't very good. So we just didn't go for like another couple of years. So we started going back. We've been maybe five, six times <clears throat> the last couple of months. We have a server up there we really like. The steak isn't the same. It's just fucking, it's not the same. It's not as thick. It's not as big. You order a bone-in ribeye, and it just does not taste the same. And then I'll eat it. I'll eat about half of it, right, because I order a bunch of other shit, bring it home, and the next day, it's fucking horrible. Like, there's something has happened, and maybe they're just getting, maybe it's coming from a different farm. Maybe it's a different vendor. Maybe they switched from Cisco to U.S. Foods or, whole, or whoever, right? But something has happened, and that's happened to a lot of places, uh, Del Frisco's bunch bunch of places we frequently go, and I don't think that my taste has changed. It there is did definitely get, something different. Did you get COVID? No. I uh, maybe I yeah I probably had COVID because a lot of that's that's so a you, complaint for a lot of people. Like, but it but it's not at all the places right because when right. I go to per Perry's Steakhouse, fucking still awesome food. Everything's awesome because because Gina swears to God. So I never was diagnosed with COVID. Gina swears to God that she cannot eat lettuce. That it just tastes like... Dude, I heard uh, somebody was saying that about... It tastes like um, some, something's wrong with it. Somebody was saying that, I think, garlic, right? Somebody who really liked garlic. Now, yeah. like, I get sick every time I eat anything with garlic. It just tastes horrible. So, I mean, it, I mean, I don't know. You never know. And your, your flat iron, what most people don't know, uh, if you ever see John Willis come into your establishment and you're a server, um, you want to be on your A game because... John will literally go to an establishment, even if the food is not great, if the service is great. And he will, uh, I don't want to, not, whatever. And he will, trust me, as a, ser as a server, if you're on your A game and John is aware that you're on your A game, um, you, will, you will know that John's gratitude. So for him to say... I'm not going to go back. I know I know what happened with Flatiron was the server that was there the entire time we were going had left. He and he, the so service he did and you know he stays in contact good. with me. He is an arborist and he does a lot of tree trimming and plant propagation and that dude is a customer now and I get an email from him probably every 6 months. I know exactly where that dude is. Yeah, so uh <clears throat> food not so good. But service on point, that that usually is what that usually is what will get John to go there every fucking week to eat a I don't know. We did, man. A we snail would... salad or whatever it is that they serve, <laughs> duck beaks or doesn't matter. We would take a lot of people. We had a Yeah. It's, uh, we spent we did. We put a lot of money into that. We spent place. John will John will uh spend some money on food. I mean I've seen him eat I've seen him eat <laughs> So much sushi. Like, I've seen him eat so much sushi. And I, and I mean a lot of sushi. That in Japan, <laughs> an old samurai shed a little tear. Like, a tear came down because John ate so much sushi. And you know how expensive that stuff is. Crazy. You ate, like, when we went to Nobu, that, that was really good food, right? Yeah, it was, it was good, but the... Okay. Here's the problem with fancy places. John likes John likes to he likes to splurge and go to go to some fancy places and he'll go to Nobu and places like that. There's not a lot of stuff on the menu that I'm gonna eat. I don't eat none of that weird shit. What did you eat? I mean, I, I ate a lot of stuff at Nobu because Nobu is one of those really fancy places that just brings out snack size. Like they bring out <laughs> little snack sizes of the best beef you're ever going to eat wrapped in bacon or whatever Did the you hell. Did like it? Was it good? Yeah, it was really good. Yeah. It was really good. But again, snack sizes. So you got to eat like 19 courses just, and you're like, um, when are they going to bring the real food? And they never bring the real food. Well, they do. It's a fucking urchin and it's crawling on the table and it's there moving was around. Something, something and, was a lie. And John's like, kacha, cuts it open and sucks the love out of it. And then he's like, oh, that's the best um, urchin crab I've ever eaten. So, uh, I mean, it's. There's not a lot of stuff 
Like, where, where was that place in San Diego we used to go all the time? Sushi place? Yeah, where you'd get sushi, and I would have chicken and rice. I think it was called Hanas. Hanas. All, was, there's a fucking Hanas everywhere you it go. Was, it was Hanas. It was Hanas. And they're never, none of them were the same. And they had the, the you know, the chicken and rice was a, was a, a good sampling of food. But you go to a fancy place and they're like. Did you like that place? I mean, it's hard to like any place that you like. Because would, you will I, go and eat there every single day. You're like, hey, it's lunchtime. You want to go to Hanas? Okay, I guess I'll have chicken and rice again. <laughs> I mean, you get a sampling of what you want because you like sushi. I don't like sushi, so it's hard to. My account was like, "What is Hana's?" I'm like, "It's a sushi place." He's, <laughs> you've spent sixty thousand oh, dollars this year. Easy, like when John would walk in the door, like he was on a first name basis with everybody in there. They knew who he was. But so, we get, but we get good service because yeah, of that. Yeah, I mean that is that's the way to do it is repeat, repeat customer. Make sure you. Make not, sure you, you know acknowledge you're not your servers. Spit in your food. Yeah, make like sure you acknowledge nothing. your servers. Make sure you tip well, and that's a good way to get uh, good service. Um, just you know, I'm not a big sushi fan. I did eat gas station sushi one time with Dwayne. That was <laughs> heard about that. that was horrific. I mean, it was so gas station sushi next door here was a thing for a while. But that was, was real was sushi. Really good. Yeah, that was real sushi. Yeah, it was this was really good. This was in a cooler next, right next to some fireworks, and a, I think there was like some <laughs> samurai swords, and then those two dollar knives you can buy. Yeah, it was a it was a starvation. We had to. Neither one of us died, so it worked out. Crazy. It is crazy. It is crazy. But yeah, Beyond Meat. Uh, Bill Gates is not eating Beyond Meat. He won't. Even, I guarantee you, he's never even had that in his refrigerator. Because it's just processed. And then Burger King. I know that. It, I mean, it just just think, independent owner, right? You are the owner. You've you've gone through all your hamburger patties. You look in the freezer, and there's all these got frostbite on them frozen it, it does beyond man. Meat Some, bullshit and then you're like nobody's gonna know nobody's gonna know we'll get fast food maybe maybe once a month we'll get fast food and that that night was a couple nights ago so we'll go to wendy's where's where's wendy's there's one here in town really is yeah. it new no so wendy's is right past mcdonald's Right across the street. Okay, I think I, re- I think I remember. Okay, yeah. so you go to Wendy's, but if there's more than three cars at Wendy's, you don't go to Wendy's because it's going to be 45 minutes in the drive through because there's only two people. People work working there, there right? Yeah. <clears throat> so I'm like, let's go to Burger King. She's like, you know you're going to hate Burger King. And she's right. So we go to McDonald's, and we get McDonald's, and it was fucking horrible. I had like two bites of it, threw it away. I don't need to go to McDonald's for another year. But she she pointed out, she goes, do you notice that Wherever we go, there's always cars in the driveway, but never at Burger King. If you want Burger King, you have to drive 30 minutes to Paris because the Burger King here is so fucking horrendous. It's it's something something's up with it, the food. Poor management. Well, Poor, but, a lot the, of, but the food is bad. A lot of real, a lot of impossible meats. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. It could be just service. Though. Okay, I mean, so we, are you going to the slave suggestion box this week for early voting? Uh, not this week, but I will. Okay. So that, I mean, ha- it, I, you have two weeks, right? It's Tennessee. It's going to be, is it only Tennessee? I thought there's a bunch of crazy shit happening. That's yeah, but I'm, to- you're only voting for your, you're only voting for your Tennessee representative this, this time. Yeah. On Where November. everything's going to change and everything's going to be the red wave. Yes. You, so here in Tennessee, I would only be voting on Tennessean you know, candidates. So it would be the House of Representatives, Senate, if they're running. I don't know who's running. Some I know weird Bill. Shit. I know Bill Lee is running and shit, but I don't know that I like that guy. It's just going to be red. He did some kind of shady shit during the the COVID stuff. Man, they all. He, that's the problem. They're all shady. So there's something. So if he becomes incapacitated, mm-hmm. it Ooh. doesn't. It doesn't just go to like assistant governor or whatever. It goes to so there, there's a bunch I, of stuff on the ballot to change some of that. I shit. think they. I think. Um, I think it does go to the assistant governor, but they have to do a runoff immediately, meaning they have to do an election to fill that place. So it's not, you know, it's not the B team coming in and taking over that they have to do an election. And the question would be, if they did do an emergency election to elect a, a new governor, wouldn't the B team win anyways? I mean, I'm, I'm assuming the B team would win anyways. So when when they said, okay, we're gonna we're gonna crank gas up, right? We're going to start our own energy production, our fuel production. From Trump saying we're going to become energy independent and all this 
goes out into the, the United States, right? Okay, everything, you're, you're back on. Mm-hmm. How long till they're actually making gas? Do they just crank some valves and all of a sudden more gas starts coming no, out? No, it's going to take a while. It'll take, How long? It'll, it'll take. So I saw, I saw Biden, the Biden administration, and I didn't see it. I heard that the Biden administration went to these oil companies and said, you need to get oil production back up. And the oil executive said, we can't, we don't even have the capacity. These plants are offline. We can't financially bring them back online. Fuck you guys. We're not doing it. The problem is they de-incentivized every reason to do, uh, you know, oil. I oh, know. <laughs> core. Core, John. Core. Yeah. Uh, it, they de-incentivized the oil companies to produce oil. That is why we have such a uh, a bleak outlook in, in the American economy as far as our own oil production. And they de-incentivized them all. And so because they de-incentivized them all, they fired, the oil companies laid people off. Got rid of their fucking, got rid of all the equipment that they were holding on to to make these new wells and tap all these new wells. So even if, even if Biden, you know, or let's say election happens and, uh, I don't know, Ted Cruz becomes president, Trump becomes president, it doesn't matter. And he's like, oil embargo off. (laughs) Start pumping. It's still going to take them probably, I mean, Oil companies have deep pockets, so they're going to be able to buy a lot of trucks and a lot of people really quick. But it's still going to take them probably, I mean, I would guess six months in order to be back to energy independent. For them to be, I mean, because we've, I mean, just like the magical, just like the magical uh, food processing plants that have all been burning up lately. We've had a lot of oil refineries so explode I, too, so I believe there's over 300 at this point. Yeah, so I mean, you're right. Yeah. Cool. You got to work Do on you, the core, John. Core. I wonder if uh, maybe it's not so. I mean, maybe it's not so insidious that these oil plants are burning down, right? Maybe that's insurance fraud. It could be insurance fraud. It also could be what we talked about before when we say um, if if John is making thousands and thousands of dollars off his chicken egg production because he's just putting chicken eggs into the market and then all of a sudden the government comes out and says your chickens have to be regulated they which, have to be which it really appa- it, it looks like that's what's yeah, happening your chickens have to be regulated they have to be free range they have to have all this stuff and it's now now John is l- looking at his bottom line he's like wait a minute I'm gonna lose money this year because I'm making all these chicken eggs and the government wants me to do all this bullshit. So maybe I just don't produce the eggs. Maybe I just forget about the chickens and concentrate on something else. And then John doesn't know that there's a chicken that's been out in the field and it's been digging up a, it's been digging up a propane line and boom, the chicken farm explodes and everybody dies because we didn't do what we were supposed to do. Same thing with the oil refineries. It's a maintenance Oil refineries are a maintenance nightmare. Like those guys are out there working on those damn things every single day. And if you're not making, if you're a, if you're an oil company and you're not making handfuls of money all of a sudden, and you got to pay shareholders and you got to, you know, keep the Rolls Royce in your, in your driveway running and shit, you're going to start foregoing that maintenance. And all you have to do is forego a little maintenance for one of those damn things to blow up, right? Uh, it's just it's just one dude with a cigarette. Oh, boom. Oh, shit. Well, like you that know? rocket fuel plant. That or the rocket fuel plant that Vegas. blew up in Vegas. Yeah, It was a cigarette, actually. It yeah, so it's just, uh, you, it's it's that, that's that kind of nuclear power plant thing. Um, once you start putting people in the mix and you decide that maybe we can put off maintenance maintenance on this one thing until next month. And then the next month comes, and they're like, maybe we can put it off for another month. And you just keep putting it off until you have an accident, and then it's fucking too late. Same thing. I guarantee you that's what's happening at all these, at all these refineries is it's going to come down to a maintenance issue. It's just like the, the gas oil platform that blew up in the Gulf. It was, it was a maintenance issue. It was literally a big company going, you know what? We we don't need to spend the money on that thing right now. We'll do it next month and then fucking boom. So when Trump is back in in two years. I don't know if Trump's going to do it. Let's say let's, okay, say, let's, say, let's let, say it's Trump. Let's say Trump comes back two years. How long until the fucking world is back to normal? Do you think he will put the world back to normal? So I, remember, when, remember when Trump um, signed all that shit and said, okay, 
insulin only costs eighteen dollars or whatever. Yeah, and then right? Biden reversed it. Right. So I was told yesterday because I I cited that, and Spearco mm-hmm. said, "Yes, we heard that. Yes, he said that, but it only applied to." Super low income, over seventy years old. There was like some some shenanigans with it. Well, there was. Some, there's always shenanigans whenever you're talking. It's never about, what they make it sound like. There, but it, there's always shenanigans when you're talking about drug drug companies. It's like uh, when the when the Biden administration said, "Hey, these we're going to make drugs cheaper for um, seniors." Well, not for six years, and it was specific drugs, and all those drugs are going to be generic by the time that happens, so it won't matter anyways. Um, in six years from the date he said it? From the date so he said we it. So he won't even so they, be alive. Yeah, so nobody nobody cares. It, they, there's always shenanigans whenever you're talking about drug companies. But the thing about insulin is once you start once you start somewhere, like if they if they say, okay, insulin's only $18 a, a bottle, which sounds kind of cheap. Um, when insulin, you say it's only this much. Reduces the price of the generic stuff. So insulin's been around long enough. Uh, I heard you can go in and get almost any drug that you need from Walmart pharmacy. If you just tell them you don't have insurance, they have like a low income schedule uh, they, for it. They might. They might. Um, here's a little trick that most people And you can get dog here's get the, pet a, insulin. You can get insulin. It's the exact same insulin that you give to your dog when your dog has diabetes. Crazy crazy that it would be the exact same insulin but it is and it's it's very cheap because why would you spend a lot of money on your dog i mean people do but just compared to how much money people have to spend on actually insulin um it's ridiculous and i didn't look at you because it's you i just looked i just happened to look and then i'm like oh shit he thinks i'm talking about him lord are you a diabetic um no uh is your dog a diabetic not yet so people that don't have kids, yeah, that have pets, those are their kids, and they will do anything to save those kids. No, I, I completely understand. I completely understand. I mean, if it, if your dog is, I mean, the reality is, uh, if you're a human being, a dog can be a vital member of your family. Even and better, so, even better than a lot of members. I mean, of your I, family. and the only reason why I know about the the only reason why I know about the dog insulin is because I had to go to Walmart and buy dog insulin for my mom's dog because she had a wiener dog that was blind and had diabetes and all kinds of other shit. And she kept that dog alive for years like that. So, I mean, yeah, it's, it, there's, there's ways, of, there's kind of ways around everything, I think. Um, but anyways, yeah, you can get dog insulin. Okay. So Trump's, Trump's back in office. Yep. How Trump's- long till the world's back how it was and everybody's happy. The question is, the question will ultimately be how long do we put up with um, – if there is a red wave, not just – forget about Trump. Because the, the reality is the presidency is not – Doesn't have any control. It, it's, it's the people behind the president. Like even President Trump said, I can't stop the war in Iraq and Syria because the military industrial machine will not let me. Yeah, they just said fuck you. So – um, it's, it's, it's what is behind you. And I think if we have a, if, if the Republicans do, uh, survive the way they think they're going to survive and there is a big red wave and the Democrats lose power, um, you're going to have all the stuff that we had under the, pre- of, under the Trump presidency is going to happen again. Meaning you're going to have Antifa going bananas, uh, Black Lives Matter going bananas, any, any of those, any of those liberal organizations that were burning down people's houses uh, under Trump are going to do that under a Republican-led House and Senate. Are they going to allow it to happen? Or That's the question. It? Will the Republicans stand up and crush that, or will they let it continue? I, if if they get full power, they have no choice but into crushing those organizations. Um, because it's the reason why they would be getting powers because people are sick and tired of all this bullshit. Don't you think that's happening? To, eh, I mean, here's the thing. Black Lives Matters, they got paid off. Those, those, those CEOs, you know, those, those organizers are all living in million dollar mansions in Malibu. They got paid off. That's why you don't, that's why you don't hear about Black Lives Matter anymore. They all got paid off. Who paid and, them off? 
the, our federal government paid them off and donations from people who don't know any better. Uh, 90% of all your donations went to white Democratic candidates, not minorities, and they didn't do anything for the black community. So, I mean, they got paid off. That's that's the key. Is that's the key in creating an organization now? The key in creating an organization now is create an organization that makes enough noise to where they pay you off, and you can go. It's like a super PAC, right? Uh, me and you could form a super PAC for uh, Americans for, and I think this is already a super PAC, but Americans for Prosperity, right? And Brandel can donate his hard-earned money to our super PAC. As long as we do, during election period, we do a couple commercials where we're like, Americans should be able to read books. Americans should be able to go to school. And we release that commercial. All the money that's left over, we can do whatever the hell we want with. Buy houses, cars, Ferraris, whatever we want. So that's basically how everybody's going now. You can make a lot of money really fast if you create some organization that people can donate money to. It's like 10 cents of every dollar of the Red Cross actually goes to helping anybody. That's, that's why you see so many people running for to be politicians, even though they have no... Yeah, because you're... I mean, I mean take a look at... Uh, Take a look if you if you really want to see something interesting. Take a look at what AOC's net worth is now, and she has only been there for three years. How much money she went from bartender to politician, and how much money she's worth now. Also, remember she only gets paid a certain amount of money. I don't know how much AOC would get paid because she's new. Well, even even but, fucking Pelosi only makes well. Yeah, the difference between AOC and Pelosi is Pelosi's been in the game long enough, and she's a. Uh, she is what you would call a constant in the game. And because she's a constant in the game, Brandel knows, like, or I, I don't want to use Brandel, but let's say you're the CEO of uh, IBM. We'll just say IBM. I know that Nancy's a constant, and I know that in four years she's still going to be there. So it's better for me to grease the wheels of Nancy Pelosi than it is to uh, AOC because AOC is an unknown, and, and really AOC is a radical. So what's she worth? Uh, oh man, I, I think she's already at. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to speculate. But go ahead and look that up. See how much she's worth. Uh, she's definitely worth more than a bartender now. But that's all payoff money. I mean, they they put her, they put her, <laughs> they put her in the bank, the House Committee on Banking. She doesn't know anything about banking. It's nothing. Not Do you a, see him booing her off stage? Well, she deserves it. Sure, she, she yeah. deserves it because she. That's the problem with the current liberal agenda. The current liberal agenda is it doesn't hold water with real liberals. I mean, you can't you can't be pro war and be a liberal. And they're all they're all hawks right now. They're all pro war. To include her, she's voted for war. That's what's going on here in in uh, because they're getting, in Ukraine. They make money off of it. Yeah, they make a ton of money off of it. They make tons and tons of money off of it. It says twenty nine million. But there's been rumors that she doesn't even have like half or even a quarter of that. Okay, well, good news. Uh, is I, I she was has gonna, a Tesla. I was going to say seven hundred and something thousand dollars. No, I wasn't even going to go into the millions. But when you think about you, when you, th you when you think about when you get up to work, you get up and you go to work. You get up to, and you go to work, and you you punch your time clock in, and you do your eight hours of work. Or whatever you're doing doesn't matter. Even John, when he gets up and he goes to work, there's a there's a certain amount of money at the end of the day that he's like, okay, this is what I got paid for doing the work that I did. Here it is in my bank. When you're a politician, that's never a certain thing. You wake up one morning and there's a dude outside with a fucking brown paper bag that's like, hey, if you vote in this particular way, all of this could be yours. And so for her to even have twenty, like. Really, for her to even be close to $29 million, people should be in Washington, D.C. with pitchforks and... So they're saying that the claim for $29 million is a rumor around Facebook, and it came up all over these different sites. But it's saying that in 2021, um, her tax financial disclosure stuff came out, and her assets were only between $3,000 and $45,000, which included a 401k plan, and she still had her student loan debt of fifteen thousand to fifty thousand. So that's mm -hmm. going to be that's going to be personal tax. 
her salary is 174,000 per year. Nobody yeah. nobody with any kind of money puts any money through their personal taxes. It's all it's all in Yeah, that's corporations, I, LLCs. So, I mean, all these all these politicians are just it's it's all graft. I mean, it, there's a certain amount of graft that you have to accept, but the reality is they have learned how to just make buku money off of our tax money. They, they're all doing. It. I mean, and then they put don't you even, in jail for doing yeah, anything they don't, similar. They don't even have to. Like Nancy has been exposed for this, but I am sure that I'll bet ninety nine percent of everybody in Congress does this with her um, stock trades, with her investments. It's always funny when she Crenshaw, is Crenshaw. Same thing. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah, Crenshaw. I mean, it, that's what I'm saying. They're all crooked. It's just how much. It's it's kind of like. It's kind of like women, John. Women are all, every woman you know, your mom, your sister, your girlfriend, your wife, they're all crazy. It's just how much crazy can you put up with, right? It's once you figure out how much crazy you can put up with, then you're, you're, you're in like slim, right? You can love her to death. She's just a little crazy sometimes, um, but you can love her to death again. It's just how much crazy can you put up with? Same thing with politicians. There's no... Ted Cruz, I guarantee you Ted Cruz is doing something that he believes is totally legal, but the rest of the world would be like, man, come on. That's fucking illegal. That's illegal. As it may- man, I go to f- as far as to say they're all doing something they know is illegal, but feel like they can just do it anyway. Because even even Nancy, even with Nancy Pelosi, when you think about the trades she's done, um, and they say, because Congress did an act of law that said, Congressional people cannot be convicted for insider trading. Okay. The truth of the matter is Congress can act, enact no law that does not affect all U.S. citizens to include themselves. They can't exempt themselves from the law just because they made a law that says we're exempt from the law. So they're breaking the law. But again, it's all about pitchforks and torches because we are not at the Capitol burning it down because they are enacting laws that uh, that put us in jail but keep them out of jail, then they can get away with it. They can continually get away with it. And as soon as you go to the Capitol, they'll put you, they'll, they'll yeah, just fucking gonna, snatch you up. They're going to put you. First, well, when you go to the Capitol, the first thing you're going to meet is about, I don't know, 150 FBI, CIA, and any other three-letter agency um, operatives that are going to be there in whatever garb you're wearing, and they're going to be like, hey, man, Here's a blowtorch. It would be really cool if you went in there and lit that place on fire. Because that's how we do everything anymore. It's all, you know, the the three-letter agencies that are operating against U.S. citizens in their constitutional rights is just ridiculous. So this can never be fixed. Don't get me wrong, John. We could go to the, we could go to, we could go to Quantico. We go to the FBI building. And we can meet dozens and dozens of people that that think just like we do. Well, or let's just say this, that are pro-America and pro-democracy. We can meet those people that understand what the republic is all about. We'll meet them. But those are not the people who are pulling the levers. Like, they're not. I mean, they're, you know, it, they're just not the people who are pulling the levers. There's too many, there has been too much infiltration of money and liberalism into those agencies and they do not uphold the law anymore. You had the damn FBI. You had the damn FBI going after parents at school board meetings because the parents didn't agree with the school boards. How is that even fucking possible? Like that's a laughable J Edgar is rolling over in his grave. Now he was a dirty he was a dirty FBI agent too. But still, he's rolling over in his grave thinking that FBI agents went to a school board meeting and were like, hey, we don't like your politics. It's ridiculous. And that's because the top is corrupt. I mean, it's the same thing the military is going through right now. The military is going through the same thing where they're, the, the leadership the leadership is like, we don't know why we can't get any recruits. We don't know why the, everybody hates being in the military. Well, it's because of you guys. I mean, it's 100% because of you guys, because you took on this whole woke culture and you have the, 
the secretary or the what is he? Which one? Miley. You have Miley in front of Congress talking about how white people are the biggest problem in the U.S. military. Well, where did he come from? He's just a he. There's a there's a point when you pick there's a point when you pin on a star that it's politics to get you all the other stars, and he has been groomed since the Clinton era to be the woke warrior for the military. Did you ever hear his name before? Never. All this? Nope. Never. But when you get to that when you get to that position, it's no longer a it's not it's not like he got promoted where the other generals got together and went, you should be the guy. It's the president that's like, hey. You are the guy because you're my woke warrior. And he went in front of Congress and said exactly what they wanted him to say. And you can't you can't disparage your own troops and then be like, I don't understand why nobody wants to be in the military. Because you're a turd. You're disparaging your own forces. Your your secretary doesn't even know what the hell's going on in the in the world. You have no plan for evacuating Afghanistan. You get a bunch of people killed over there. Like it, it's just could you have evacuated Afghanistan? Um, could I have? No, I couldn't have evacuated Afghanistan. Could, but, you, have, could you have run the operation? But a, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. A MUSOC from 1990, that's just a MUSOC. Not tell, tell them what that everybody, is. Uh, a MUSOC was a Marine Corps expeditionary unit. Um, did a lot of training and was... That's kind of like the Marine Corps SEALs. Yeah, it was. I mean, it was. it was a... I'm sure there are people who are going to be like, oh, MUSOC. Um, but it was the tip of the spear. And I guarantee you, if a MUSOC would have been tasked with evacuating that airport, it would have went 100% better. And those Marines wouldn't have got killed because they got killed for a specific training issue that they were lacking, and it allowed that to happen. So... Um, I mean, the reality is that commander, that even the Marine Corps, even the Marine Corps commander who was in charge of those Marines there should have been fucking fired, should have been flailed because of the way they conducted that operation. They were letting too many, they were letting too much shit go on that they didn't need to let go on because. How many people is a MUSOC? Uh, geez, it's been so long. I don't, they don't even have MUSOCs anymore. It comes with the fucking ships and everything, right? Yeah, it comes with ships, comes with tanks, comes with aircraft. I mean. Uh, and the the real the reality is the training that the Marine Corps, uh, the re- training that the Marine Corps required for a MUSOC to be certified. Now, in the late nineties, in the late nineties, they the Marine Corps again because just like I said with the uh, nuclear power plant, they don't want to f- they don't want to fix problems. They just want to put po- toothpaste over the crack. In the nineties, they started letting battalions be MUSOC certified that were not. MUSOC certified that did not really qualify to be MUSOC certified, but you had a requirement to have that. You had a requirement to have that MUSOC out there. And so the people in charge were brushing over the frailties of what those MUSOCs could actually accomplish. Um, And that's kind of why that program went away because you had these people who were evaluating, you had these people who were evaluating tasks but weren't holding anybody to the evaluation. So when you do, when you would fail on a whatever it was, they wouldn't be like because it used to be, for example, the uh, uh, twenty five mile march. Haven't done they haven't done that in forever. But the twenty five mile march, if you didn't complete, if the battalion did not complete that in eight hours, you did it over the next weekend. Like the next weekend, you were out and you had to do that motherfucker over. And that, I'll tell you what. How many times did you do it? Uh, f- for MUSOC training, I did it four times. That's full combat load. Full Alice combat pack, load. That's, water, the, that's, full, that's full combat load, the battalion. So for me as a rifleman, I suffered. But I didn't suffer as much as the 81 millimeter mortar guys and the dudes that were humping 50 cows. Like, I know in the old days they used to walk hundreds and hundreds of miles. But that, that 25 miler was a, it was a, it was a test. And the first time I did it with one nine, we were actually, we were at San Onofre. We were on our return. We were on our return and we were at San Onofre and we had just got behind. We were, we were a little bit away, still, still down towards the beach and alpha company commander came running (laughs) and he had, he, I, I will never forget. He had a saw 
two M16s and an M203 over his fucking shoulder. And he was like, run, we're not going to make it. And we literally ran from SOI. You know, this is at the end of a 25 mile. We ran from SOI to Horno, which five miles, I think six miles. I think it was like six miles, but still it was at the end of 25 miles. We still have all our gear and everybody was running to get to Horno so we could make it in the, under the eight hours. Now, were we combat effective? I mean, probably not. We made the eight hours, though. So, I mean, it's a... you have any wear and tear now from shit like that? I mean, you can't... You can't... I would say that... I, actually, I would say that most of my wear and tear came from the last... Uh, the last four years in service versus the first... My younger years. Because, again, you, you heal up a lot faster when you're younger... And I'm sure I did some damage, but the the mission changed, or your 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 damage changed for service members the minute we went to full body armor. So the minute we went to plates, and you know, the, like I got the first the first version, which was the heaviest. So you had soft armor, you had the plates, side plates, all that bullshit, and so you were tipping the scales just slick with your body armor at 85 pounds and then you got to put a combat load on top of that and then you know if you're going to stay out longer than 20 minutes you got a ruck that you put on top of that so guys i mean it it wasn't it wasn't crazy to think that there were dudes leaving the wire every day that were doing five mile patrols that were carrying 150 pounds of stuff on their back and that all translate to knee injuries back injuries you know and you can't I mean, you can, the military does it, but you can't do that for long. I mean, the army learned, the army learned really quickly that, um, don't leave the vehicles. So, um, they did, a, they did most of their, they did most of their patrols effectively inside of vehicles. Um, but the Marine Corps, Marine Corps doesn't, Marine Corps likes to do things the old way. So we did foot patrols. Now, from a strictly security security reason, our foot patrols were more successful than their vehicle patrols in Ambar where we were at. Just because of vehicles Just, targets? Yeah, vehicles become targets. And there's, there, a vehicle's not really as threatening as 12 Marines with guns pointed at everybody's face. So I believe that we were more successful with our foot patrols, but it put more people at risk. Um, and again, the equipment was just so damn heavy. It's why when they went to... Uh, when we started going in Afghanistan and going to altitude, they had to get rid of side sappies and they reconfigured the vest a little bit. So you were just wearing the plates and you weren't wearing all the other bullshit. Um, but you know, the, the problem with the military is you can't, you can't like, if you, if we spend a million dollars, like if I, if I spend a million dollars on a piece of equipment and I say this piece of equipment, this piece of equipment could be, it could be three pounds or it could be a hundred pounds. The, in the Marine Corps, they're going to be like, uh, make sure it's a hundred pounds. <laughs> yes. I, I understand that we can, I understand that it's modular and we can make it three pounds, but the end user is not smart enough to make it three pounds. So make sure it's always a hundred pounds. And that's just the way they were. It's like, even with, even the snipers, when the snipers would go on missions, they were, they had to wear full armor, side sappies, groin protection, neck. And it's like, you're, you guys don't understand the mission that they're getting to perform and you want them to carry, because, you know, they had to carry MSIDs, their weapon systems, all that. So, I mean, some of those, I what's said... An, what's an MSID? MSIDs was the uh, camera and computer system, okay. so they could take... The do, yeah, they have. could do reconnaissance pictures and shit like so that. So you could tell on yourself. Yeah, thermals, all that kind of stuff. And uh, and so those guys were going out, like you would do a 24-hour a patrol and everybody had a fucking rucksack because of all the other bullshit that they had to carry. Dude, we saw we saw 120-pound rucksacks when they had comms in them. Yeah, well, I mean, the, that's the one thing that the military has done well is that the radios have gotten a lot, lot smaller. So have you seen these mesh network systems now? No. It replaces fucking everything. It's 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 like the little Oh yeah, 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 that they that they use, yeah. And you can literally apparently you just talk around the world with these things. They have fucking you have to put up repeaters and shit, yeah. but you have your whole system with them. I'm sure the Marine Corps is still using a PRC seventy with a fucking Frick seven with, seven. A, with a ten pound battery that goes in the back. Um, but I mean, the radios are a lot smaller. I mean, if anybody uh, 
if anybody thinks they have a heavy radio, you don't have a 104 with the damn, I can't even think of the designator, but the 104 used to have a, a crypto radio. It was twice as big as the 104. And the 104 was, like, literally, I had to go to John's shop to get a rucksack modified, uh, a large Alice pack modified to make it bigger, to make the bag bigger so I could put the 104 and this piece of crypto in there so we could go on a mission and talk with that equipment. You couldn't put anything else in the backpack. And like, it was the, done. The 119 was the Singars. Yeah, 119 was Singars. Then, then they made it small so it would and actually it, fit in a cargo pocket. Then they, Well, they it went. So the 119 was, the 119 initially was pretty big. It was, uh, it was about as big as a 104. You guys can look these up if you want to see. It was about as big as a 104. If you just go to your Airsoft guys, they actually probably oh, have Oh, yeah, them. they probably have them. And then... Um, sometime in the beginning of the war, they cut that in half. So instead of, instead of it being a full, a full size radio, they cut it in half and it was more of a brick and it would fit in the outside pocket of a rucksack. Now it's even, I believe it's even smaller. I may be wrong. The issue is the battery. Uh, in order to create the power necessary to run, uh, continuous ops, you need a big battery. And so the radio is almost as big as the battery now. So it still has to be a certain size for just regular Joes. I'm sure Delta has that. Uh, I'm sure Delta has that little teeny phone where it's just a little. They just flip it like this. And they're like, pss, 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 I heard it's hey. implanted in their teeth. It could be. It could be. I'm sure that. I'm sure the ninjas have. Uh, you know that they don't even. They don't even need. They don't even take radios anymore because they just have a direct line to the White House. So do you think they have tracking beacons, in all of the soldiers, or do you think they actually put them in prior to mission? That's twice. It's twice. He's yeah. going to get somebody next. It's a Russian roulette with the wasp. Um, well, I don't know if they put them in. Now, uh, Blue Force Tracker was a pretty good piece of kit. And I, and I, I would say from a, from a tactical perspective, it would not be wrong to know where every one of your Joes were. Uh, you know, I'm sure that – I'm probably saying something. I, I'm sure that uh, – the been a, tier, it's been long enough. I'm sure the tier guys, I'm sure the tier guys, uh, you know, you know everywhere the tier guy is going. And uh, well, I mean, even just off off them being able to fire IR shit and not hit you, but yet other kill everyone else on the battlefield. I mean, I'm sure the tier guys have some special special equipment because they they were going in. Fuck, it's been ten years. They were going in with full camera. You know, so you could get a, a video of the full assault and all that shit. So, I'm sure that uh, I mean, I'm sure they the, have a even special the dogs tracker. have fucking cameras on them now. Um, but maybe not because they did get <laughs> because the SF guys, and this is I guess this is the lower level of tier. The SF guys all got busted in Bagram um, because they were wearing their Fitbits and going on runs, and then people in the United States were like. Oh, this is where the this is where the special forces guys sleep because he just runs this loop around here, blah blah blah, and goes right to the side because the you know your Fitbit is not a secure means of. So did the bad guys ever use? Uh, that? No, I don't think the bad guys. I think it. I think it was exposed here in the United States before the bad guys used it. But it's it's how uh, it's how we know where every single Russian is in Ukraine. They're tracking their phones. Um, and so we can see troop concentrations solely based off of their phones and because guys are using uh, unencrypted uh, devices in order to communicate with loved ones back home even though uh, Putin forbid it. I mean that, that's the hard thing when you tell a, when you tell the you, you tell the infantry guys you're like, hey you can't use you can't use any technology to call home. So it, it, it's like it's like saying don't don't. When you get to when you get to Bagram, don't have sex with all the women that are at Bagram that you haven't seen in six months. Of course, they're <laughs> of course there's going to be some illicit shit going on. How many babies come out of that? I don't know, but I guarantee you it's a lot. I mean, I went on a I went on the first. This is inter- this is kind of interesting. I went on the first uh, Gator ship that had females on it. So we did a rim pack. So that's. A rim pack is when you do, you go up to San Francisco, out to Hawaii, and you spend 30 days at sea. 
It's like a test prior yeah. to going Westpac. It's a test. And they had 50 they had 50 female, 50 female sailors on board this ship. And the battalion commander got we had a big battalion formation and it was like, "Hey, there's going to be these females on board the ship. You're not to talk to them, you're not to sit with them, you can't look them in the eye, you need to stay away from them. If you have any contact with these females, we're going to there's there's going to be consequences." And so <laughs> We go on, we go on this rim pack. One of the females happens to be a Marine. I have the staple tune at the time and they, uh, everybody's been told stay away from these women, but it's 18. The average age for a Marine is 18 to 23. And all these females were, I guarantee you in the same range. How in the hell do you tell them when they're 24 hours a day, seven days a week in the same location, you tell them you can't talk to them. You can't, Oh man, it was like cockroaches at night. They'd be running all over the place. And, uh, when I, we got back, <laughs> we got back, I had to go to a, uh, a battalion commander's mass because one of my Marines decided that he was in love with the, she was in the S2, uh, she was from uh, That's intelligence. Yeah, she was an S2, you know, analyst who was on board the ship at the time and she was from regiment and he was in love with her and you know, you can't how do you stop love? So, so he I, dimed himself out or he got caught? They got caught. Um somebody dimed somebody dimed them out and this is after they've been back and all this stuff and they and, and they got caught and so I had to go up there and Battalion commander, you know. What does getting it, caught look like? Somebody saw them out in town. Yeah, but not, nothing even serious. Like, they weren't making out on the street or something. And so the innuendo, and then the battalion will do an investigation. And then I think I think my boy actually, like, when they Sergeant Major brought him in, my boy was like, we're in love, we're going to get married. And that was the, it was like, you were given a direct order. So disobedience of a lawful order, which, I mean, in today's world, I don't know how that's a lawful order, but it was disobedience of a lawful order, which they got him. He got restriction, blah, blah, blah. What's the punishment? It wasn't bad. I mean, it was, he got restriction, uh, forfeiture of pay, didn't lose any rank. Did he get to keep the pussy? He kept the pussy. They actually got, they actually ended up getting married. They actually ended up married. They got divorced a couple of years later because relationships in the military don't work. It's a dumb idea. Uh, I don't care who you are. They don't work very well unless you're senior enlisted. Like if you're, if you're talking, you're a fucking E8 and you want to marry another E8, then there's a good chance it could work. But a lot of those end in disaster too. Is that just because they send them so for? Yeah, it's just, it's, you're just all over the place. And you know, if you're a hot chick, why would you, there's anyways, um, they ended up getting divorced. Anyways, that same gator ship. I won't name it. You can look it up. That same gator ship went on deployment. We went on deployment on that same gator ship. Not with all those females. Three. <laughs> three. Because three all the rest of, the, of them were pregnant from rim pack. Three of those girls went on deployment with us. Everyone else was shore duty because they got pregnant. Now, the problem with that is. Is there a punishment to them? No. Like the the, the female Marine, she didn't get she didn't get in trouble at all. She, matter of fact, she got promoted. She got married to us, got promoted for her work while aboard the ship while my Marine got punished. Um, that's the, that's the dichotomy of having, having males and females in close proximity in the type of environment that the military creates. Um, they want to, they want to raise the flag for femininity, but they also, uh, they also will punish you for things that two consenting adults did anyways so you so, think they're just handing out the morning after pill now like it's just in chow hall no you, you have to understand is uh, you have to understand john that most most people don't understand what deployment life is actually like like most uh, 90 90 99 percent of all people don't understand what it means to go to afghanistan or what it means to be on a ship for uh six months they don't they don't understand it and so once they get a taste of it like once they get a taste of it they're like Fuck that. I don't want to go out on ship for they six get months on purpose. Pregnant or like I'll give you an example. When I was in, uh, when I was in Somalia, 10th mountain brought, uh, 15 girls. I think they had 15, they had 15 fe females with them that were doing administrative stuff. They weren't, they weren't combat. Uh, 
They weren't infantry. They were there for strictly administrative stuff. Now, the difference between a male and a female is if you have a, if you have a corporal male who was there doing administrative stuff, as you can, from Fury and Saving Private Ryman, or Saving Private Ryan, uh, that corporal could be pulled from that administrative duty and thrown into the fight. 10th Mountain was not going to do that with any of those females. As a matter of fact, because I was a very young Marine at the time when I was in Somalia, <coughs> we made friends with these females because the Army guys weren't allowed to talk to them, um, but we weren't within the we were kind of even outside of our chain of command a little bit. It was kind of weird. Didn't they actually sneak into your hide site? Yes. Um, but those girls, to the last, to every single one of them, we were talking to them and they said they would never do this again. And if 10th Mountain was going to get deployed, they would immediately get pregnant. So they would not have to deploy. Now, I don't know how it works with 10th Mountain, but for the Navy, that's a non, that's a, a non-critical of. You know, when a female gets pregnant, it may be different now because we have so many females uh, in the service. But back then, it was non-critical, meaning they would be assigned to shore duty, but the ship would not get augmented. The ship would not get augmented with the females that they lost. So they left without bodies. So they left without 40, what is that, 46 bodies, 47 bodies. So they left without bodies. Now, the problem with that is, that means sailors aboard that ship, to include the three females that stood up and did their fucking job. Good on them. But that means sailors on those ships had to do double duty for the fucking people that decided they weren't going to go. I mean, that's why, like, you know, when a Marine, when a, like, prior to deployment, a Marine breaks his leg, the battalion commander's like, guess what? You're still going, motherfucker, because yeah. that cast is going to come off before the deployment's over, and you can do some work. And they would still have the guy with the broken leg, you know, doing stuff. He'd be in, he'd be uh, serving chow or something, um, because you know everybody leaves with too many bodies. You know, the uh, especially a naval vessel. A naval vessel could always use ten more guys, right? There's always ten more guys that they could use in order to run more efficiently, but they only have so many people. And when you take 40 bodies and are just like, yeah, they're not going. That hurts a ton of people, like a ton of people. It hurts a ton of people because they have to work twice as hard in order to do the same job that they would have normally had to do. So Does it make it's them a better? pain in the ass. Does it make those sailors better? Yeah. Make them stronger. I mean, is it satisfying to know, to know that you were uh, more effective? Maybe it makes it satisfying, but again, we're not talking about things that make you stronger. We're talking about 24 hour watches. So if you have to do a 24 hour watch because you're the, the dude on duty and you only get six hours off because all the people that are not on board, and then you have to do another 20 24 hour watch. What you're doing is you're making that sailor ineffective because over time, you know, again, six months over time, he's not doing his job anymore. There's a point where he's just like, I'm not doing my job. Um, so that's kind of, you know, it's kind of like the, uh, it's kind of like the ship that the Russians lost. Effectively, they had enough equipment and en they had enough equipment aboard that ship that it could not have been attacked the way it was attacked. They had operators that were not paying attention to their jobs. That's the, that's the big thing with technology is if you're, if it's a boop, boop, if it's a fucking scope that's doing this, and you have a dude that is sitting there looking at that scope for any longer than a half hour. <laughs> Fuck, he's not watching that scope. He's not watching it. Don't we have a computer system that'll be like, hey, motherfucker, <coughs> missiles. Uh, Torpedoes coming. They do. The problem is when, um, when the computer system goes missiles, you still have to cognitively make the decision that if it's real or if not. If it's real or not. And by the time it goes... To the commander, to the guy that's holding the button that's going to fire the fucking whiz gun. The missile's already hit the fucking ship. Okay, let's talk about the, the Russian ship, but hold on, i got to pee. Oh, you, all right, John's got to pee. Okay, so that Russian ship we're talking about is the flagship? Yeah, I believe it's the Kursk. So who blew it up? I, th I think the Ukrainians actually did it. Think so? Yeah, I think the Ukrainians did it. They either did it with the, uh, they either did it with one of their um, kayak remote-controlled Autonomous remote controlled uh, kayak bombs. The fuck's that look like? Like it, a clepper? It, it looks no. It's it looks like it looks like a regular plastic kayak that they painted black, 
and they put magnetic sensors on the front of it, and then it has a full suite of uh, electronics to maneuver it, and it has a, a pump jet on the back of it to, you know, send it on its on its way. So you don't think the Foreign Legion came out and no, the Foreign limp Legion it, didn't limp it, I, mind it like the Rainbow Warrior. No, I don't think the Foreign Legion. Or was Legion that the Israelis? Lived. Somebody blew that up. Yeah. Oh, you mean the the underground pipeline? No, no, no. I'm oh. talking. I'm talking about the Greenpeace fucking. Oh, the boat Greenpeace, that they yeah, blew up. yeah. The Greenpeace boat they blew. I think the I think the French are pretty clear that they did it. Yeah. I when think. they blew that Greenpeace boat up, they, it was the. Did you? Uh, I don't think it was the Legion. I think it was real French army that was like, "We're blowing your asses up." Was it you that? Did you buy a Klepper kayak recently? No, I want to buy one. Okay, Ranger Dave then. Somebody yeah, somebody Dave was here Klepper. telling me they bought a yeah. Ranger Dave bought a fucking uh, Klepper kayak. One surprised me. One surprised me one bit. I would if Ranger Dave bought a Klepper kayak. It has a pump jet on it. It also there's a probably a uh I'm going to go a 75% chance it can go underwater. <laughs> like it can physically go underwater and Dave Ranger Dave can communicate to the um, what's that thing in space that the Russians and the Americans are on? This is the, the space, space station. Because he was Ranger talking Dave, to him. He Ranger Dave can talk to the space station if he wants to. You know, he was here for like forty-five days. That was good. That's good. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. So, I'd come out and I'm like, "Holy shit!" There's an antenna farm out here, and he'd have like a dozen antennas up. I'm like, "Who the fuck are you talking to?" He's like, "Space station, Russia, all over the place." So I was out mowing. I don't know few months ago, I'm out mowing, and I'm like, something gets caught in the fucking mower. Sounds pretty bad, right? So I, I fucking back up, and I'm caught in this chain. And I'm like, where the fuck does this chain go? So I'm pulling this chain, and he's got it fucking, he's got, it's got to be 80 feet of chain out there. And he's got it into a, a, he poured like some concrete and a steel spike, and it's attached there, and it comes up over so that it's at level that you can completely block the driveway off with this chain and it'll it'll lock into the other side and shit. So he he set up uh, uh perimeter defenses all over the place here. Yeah, that sounds like Ranger Dave. I mean, that does sound like Ranger Dave. And I when I was and he was here when I was asking you about the Constantino wire. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. And he he every day he's like that Constantino wire come in yet? That con-? I'm like, "No, it's like it's a lot of it. You're going to see the semi truck come in." We're gonna Did have you to, ever get Constantino wire? What happened? We got some. We have some Constantino oh, okay. wire. And he's like, okay, we need we need two rows for the base, and then you need another row to put on the top of the base. Yeah. And, yeah. Hey, Constantino wire is interesting. If you're in the military and you've played with Constantino wire, you know that if you walk within 10 yards of Constantino wire, you're going to get caught in it. It's going to grab your fucking camis, and it's going to rip your camis up. And when you're putting Constantino wire out... It's going to, you're going to get caught in it. It's going to get tangled on you. You're going to, it's going to fuck you up because that's what Constantine wire is made for. It's made for military guys. But if you're a, uh, if you're a local and you're in flip flops and a man dress, you will flow through that three <laughs> layers of Constantine wire. Like it doesn't even exist. Like your flip flops will never even touch Constantine wire. It is just amazing to see that happen. So it's perfect for keeping uh, National Guard yeah, and local law it, enforcement it's out. It's definitely perfect for keeping you in. But the crackhead will come right through. The it. crackhead's going to he's going to sail right through it. Not only is he going to sail right through it, but he's going to have an extra twenty dollars in his pocket from scrapping the Constantine wire that he took with him as he was rolling through your perimeter. His bolt cutters aren't getting caught. Yeah, they're not not at all. His bolt cutters. I mean, I don't even think he uses bolt cutters. I think he just. Gets it in the teeth there and snaps it off and then takes it away with him. But, yeah, you don't, like, like the Marine Corps went down to the, the I don't know if you remember a couple of years ago, the Marine Corps went down to the border to help the Border Patrol, with the ongoing crisis. And one of the things they did was they started putting up Constantina wire. Like, everywhere they put up Constantina wire, they would have to go out because the Mexicans would just be flowing through the Constantina wire. It doesn't... It's one of those weird things that doesn't stop people who actually want to get through it. <laughs> but if you don't want it to, if you don't want to tear you. If so how, they, how are they getting through? They're just putting like carpets over it or something? Yeah. They, I mean, if it. Or they have a, like a Constantino wire truck. They just roll up. The, Constantino wire. I mean, Constantino wire is great. Um, it's a, it's a great initial barrier, but it's like a, it's just like a Claymore. Or it's like a, it's like a minefield. You have to have constant eyes on it. If you're not watching, because what you're trying to do is control flow. I use Constantina wire to get people to go to a certain spot, and then that's where the machine gun is. 
But if you don't if you don't maintain eyes on the concertina wire, then you know a twelve year old bolt cutters can get through concertina wire. Could we secure the border? Oh, of course we could. How would you do it? How would I do it? This is how I would do it. Yeah, he just got that big. Smile. I would move the army and the Marine Corps from all their bases, and then I would make a I would make a buffer zone along the border where they would do all their live fire training. That's what I've always said. You would just do live fire training all along the border. And anybody who makes it through, welcome to America. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it could be secured, but our policies are so our policies are so weak that we don't they don't they don't really want it secured. The reality is they don't want it secured. We could do it. I mean, fuck. We fake went to the moon. Do you think that? No, no, we went to the moon. I don't think we went to the moon. We went to the moon. There's too much there's too much uh there's what, too what, many... about, what about the telemetry system they said they lost that showed up in a dude's basement in Chicago? I mean, if I had an 8-track tape right now, I couldn't play it. Yeah, you could. No. I, know, I know for a fact you have an 8-track tape. I couldn't play it. Car you have. I couldn't play it. So it's, it's, uh, it's the problem with the moon denial. Like 10 years ago, 10 years ago, you could have went, you could have went full bore with moon denying. But the problem with moon denying is there's been too many people already that hate America that have sent orbiters to the moon, meaning China, India, I think Pakistan, maybe um, have sent orbiters to moon. And you know what the, the first thing they did the first, not let's land on, let's land our little thing on the moon and do some experiments. No flag off. The first thing they did was flew over all the lunar land, all the lunar landing sites to ensure that we actually landed there and took pictures. So you can actually go on, you know, Google right now, and there are fucking pictures from India. There are pictures from China, of our race car that we left there, our footprints, all the stuff that we left there. That's the one thing you about don't think human- like some solar fucking space no, there's storm no, would wipe that shit. There's out no there. nothing. Nothing moves on the moon. What about um? What about all the bases on the other side of the moon and shit? When when they were flying around, nobody fucking grabbed up their shit and said, "No, you I can't mean, come here." I mean, the beautiful thing about Americans is we leave trash wherever we go. So it's not like it's not like NASA could be like, "Well, solar winds blew all that stuff away." Well, mm-hmm. and we leave trash everywhere. There's a lot of photos of that's supposed to be from the moon that looks like it's all like old Egyptian shit. There's also interesting. Have you heard of the hollow hollow moon theory? Right, hollow where, moon. I don't know that I've heard. Where the moon, moon the moon is actually hollow. It's made out of it's made out of uh, Swiss cheese. No, it's actually made out of. Uh, it's made out of a metal material, mm. and that's why the craters. That's why the craters on the moon aren't deep because the cra- the impacts are just in the dust, and the moon is actually a space station, like Star Wars. Yeah, so it's a death, it's a defunct Death Star. Mm. They actually just recently made a movie about that. That the moon is actually. What was the movie? I can't think of the name of the movie. I didn't. I didn't see it, but um, there's theories that because. When we were still doing the Apollo missions, when we were still doing the Apollo missions, NASA had an idea that what would it sound like when something impacts the moon? And so one of the Apollo missions was to jettison the, uh, the return, one of the return rocket systems, whatever. And so they left a bunch of sensors and then they jettisoned this thing and it hit the moon. And you can, you know, this is on Google. Um, and it it rang like a bell instead of thumping like a rock. And so NASA's got this big explanation why it rang like a bell, but it resonated around the moon instead of uh, just thumping on a dirt source. So because of that experiment, there was a big conspiracy theory, even back in the 70s, that the moon was actually hollow. That it was hollow and it was some sort of space station covered in debris. Have you, have That's you, why they dropped a bomb on it recently, too. To Who dropped a bomb on it? NASA did. NASA dropped a bomb, bomb on the moon. I don't know what kind of bomb, but it was big enough. There's two of them. It was big enough to... Uh, Randall got one. Well, then there's still two. I'm looking at them right now. Oh. So, Wasps. I mean... So, have you heard that um, all video and photo that you see from NASA, none of it's actually real through a camera or anything. It's all just CGI. I, I have heard that with the uh, there's a there's actually a All pretty space station shit and everything. But there's actually a pretty good um a pretty good channel. I can't think of the name of the channel, but they take all the Mars 
they take all the Mars rover pictures and they line them up with places in some Australian desert where they did the initial experiments and they line them up and they're like, this isn't Mars. This is fucking Australia. Here it is. The mountain and shit. So maybe, I mean, who knows? So the, the pipeline that got cut pipeline got cut. Who cut it? Um, nobody knows. So Russell brand had Jocka on it. Mm-hmm. And Russell thought he was going to get Jocka to be like, yeah, the seals totally would have done that. And he's like, no, we don't have to do that bullshit no more. It would just been a, a unmanned vehicle. Yeah, no, but nobody knows who who did it. The uh, the Polish the Polish government thanked the United States for doing it. Yeah. Um. But recently, I would I. My opinion would have been yes. The United States fucking blew that pipeline up. It only the makes Russians sense. Just came out so because the did it. because the Polish. Uh, the only reason why I say that the U.S. would do it is because the day before Poland signed a contract with Europe to supply them all the natural gas that they were going to miss from the Russians. And then miraculously the next day, the pipeline uh, blew up. But recent, recent to your saying the Russians say that the British did it is, you know, the British just had a prime minister that lasted like 15 minutes. So this is like the sixth one. Yeah. Well, they had a prime minister that lasted like 15 minutes. She the Russians her. hacked, the Russians hacked her phone and she basically said, we did it. Like, called our president and was like, it's done. <laughs> so mm-hmm. there's a pretty good, there's there's pretty good evidence pointing to the British. I would have never thought, I would have never, like, the British weren't even in my, my frame of window for this. Like, if it's this is total 007, he probably had that little scuba respirator on there. He shot his fucking uh, Walter PPK into it. It blew it up. And he rode a bubble up to the surface, and then there was probably a girl in a lifeboat that he had to, you know, hang out with before the secret before British intelligence rescued him. I would have never thought the British would do it, but it, it it's looking like the British were the ones that did it. So why did this prime minister, whoever, resign? I think she resigned because the Russians hacked her phone, and everything she was saying, the Russians were like writing it down. I think she resigned because she wasn't. Like they said that she started giving up secrets. Not I, I don't want to say secrets because it's one president calling another president. But she started giving up secrets before she even had her intelligence briefing. Before they were like, hey, this is what you can't say. This is what you can't say. Blah, blah, blah. Like the reality is you don't have to. Like why would you call the United States and be like, we did it. By me saying, by by me acknowledging to you, John, if I go, I did it means we've had previous conversations. So we've had a conversation previously where you're like, Hey, pop the tires on the Ferrari. And then a week later, the tires are popped on the Ferrari. I don't have to call you and go, it's done. You already know it's done, right? You're like, Hey dude, pop tires on the Ferrari." That should have been the conversation. It's like, Oh shit. I didn't think you guys were going to do it. And you did it. So, I mean, she fucked up. And the, you know, the British government is in fucking turmoil right now because they went woke politics. You can't go woke politics. Do you People think they just can, don't like it. Do you think they can come back from it? Oh, yeah, they're going to come back from it. I mean, this, you know, this isn't, this so isn't world, that big of a the deal. The world's going to be just run by Republicans again, basically. Um, all things that become good are run by Republicans, and then Democrats run them. <clears throat> so I mean, my point to that is, even, let's say Trump gets reelected and you've got another four years of Trump. Another four years of Trump. You guys better look at that shit as I have four years to get ready because when it flips back, it's going to be even worse next time. I don't I, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think uh, all this I- identity politics and all this wokeism, the Democratic Party is going to have to shed it. I mean, they're going to have to get rid of it. They're going to have to come back to the center if they want power. If they want power, they're going to have to come back to the center. They've got to, they got to get all this wokeness out of their, out of their psyche and go back to the center and start making deals in the center because it's not working. It's just not working for them. Is there them. a point where the people in the, in the United States revolt and bring, uh, we, bring the United States back to? We're not, we're not close to that. We're, it, it's, it's about comfort level. And the reality is we are very comfortable. I mean, if you, even if you take a look at what's going on as far as the, uh, the, the woke culture and all that, we're very comfortable. Um, even BLM 
was able to burn down any city it wanted to. The only time they had a problem was when they said they were going to go into the suburbs. Do you think they you think they had control or you think they were targeted? You think they were directed and Oh, they were directed target? 100%. It, it was all it was all orchestrated. The CIA just like the January 6th thing. It was CIA involvement, FBI, they were all there orchestrating the entire event. I mean, you literally have I can I can bring up videos of protesters looking at yeah, I've seen fully it. operational SWAT guys fully kitted up going, "Hey man, are you going to do anything about this?" And them just standing there going, nope. And you also have pictures and videos of Capitol Police officers moving barriers to let them in. The first people in the Capitol were escorted by Capitol Police. The female who was killed, escorted by Capitol Police. Well, you could see you could see handlers show yeah. up that clearly were not part of so, the group and I mean, hand out hand out cell phones and shit. Our government is so it's so corruptible. I mean, the reality is if you don't really want to know what happened on January 6th or you would be like holy shit what do you think these happened? people are out of hand. I think a bunch of Americans that were concerned about their government went to the Capitol and then three letter agencies got involved and made sure they went inside the Capitol. Now you have to understand there is a Democrat currently working for Joe Biden who actually took a bomb in the Capitol and blew up the rotunda. None of that happened on January 6th. And, right. and the, so the Democrat, the, that's the, the um, whatever. And, and you got Democrats running around saying this is the worst thing since Pearl Harbor. Shut the fuck up. She was one of the founders of BLM, that, that organization that blew the bomb up in the Capitol building. Could, could be. I don't know her no, affiliation. I can't now. remember. Yeah. I can't remember the party. But you can't. You don't know what you're talking about. They, they, those people were escorted in there. They were allowed to be in there. Like they, when you say bomb, it was 76 pounds of C4 or plastic explosives of some sort was stolen. And several pounds of that was detonated inside of the Capitol building. Yes. You can, there's pictures look of it, it up. video. You like look people, it up. They, people have no idea and those, that this happened. Those people currently work for the, your federal government. So, I mean, don't. Clinton pardoned, can't even, Clinton pardoned yeah. her on his last yes, day in Clinton office. Clinton did pardon her. You can't, you can't tell me that the, the, the two were the same. The weather underground. Yeah, weather underground, yeah. And they'd blown up some other stuff, too. It wasn't just the Capitol. Um, so, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know the way we go, but we're, Do you the reality killed, is we're too comfortable. Do you think they killed U.S. citizens? Who? The, the powers that be. Oh, yeah. They, At the Capitol building on the 6th. Well, yes, they assassinated uh, Bobbitt. I can't think of her name. Yes, yeah. I think it's Bobbitt. Ashley Bobbitt, Ashley, Bobbitt. Ashley Bobbitt. They assassinated her. She was standing with three Capitol Police officers. Two were armed with AR-15s, and the dude shot from inside the cap Why do you inside think a secured area. I think that those senators. Why her? Oh, just, just target of opportunity. Yeah, she was just target opportunity because she was the one closest to the door, so she was a target of opportunity. And I am sure that the senators inside that room made a big point about go ahead and shoot somebody and you are not going to get in trouble because they protected that guy for a long time. Like his identity was hidden for a long, long fucking time. And I mean, if you watch the video, he almost gets shot by a Capitol police officer. That guy was getting ready to go to guns on his ass because he didn't know who was shooting. So a um, little, little ridiculous that, that people are not, that are, people are not more enraged about, that happening than anything else because no senators and no nobody was in danger yeah what it what was the most terrible thing that happened some dude stole nancy pelosi's podium yeah he was that dude was actually on tim pool <laughs> he stole he, and he didn't really even steal it he just carried it around for a little bit yeah he was actually right? on tim pool show so ridiculous totally ridiculous that that if if you compare if you compare compare the january 6th riot to any any Democratic rioting that happened under Trump. Not even, not even close. Not even, not even close. Not even close. Do you think we, Trump intended to? No, no, he had. I mean, because because here's the truth. The truth of the matter is, when the shit was going down, there were there were leaders who actually sent him messages saying, "Hey, you need to do pre facto pardons." You need to pardon people before an event happens, before it gets out of control. And he was like, no. Who should he, who do they want pardoned? 
uh, people that were involved in the January 6th communications. So, and he said no. Now, if you are if you are attempting to take over the government, then why would you say no? He requested National Guard troops to protect the Capitol for January 6th. They said no. So this was all orchestrated. Every bit of it, it's no different than the Russian collusion bullshit. This was all orchestrated by the fucking Democratic Party. They want, the, the, here's the thing. The left takes the bait. The left always takes the bait. If, if I say, hey, we're going to burn down New York City, the left is just frothing at the bit to go march and burn down New York City. Burn down some street in New York City, loot, do all that shit. Everything that the right, or everything that the left has been doing to bait the right has not worked. Like, when they raided mar lago The whole point of raiding mar lago was not because the National Archives was mad that Trump had some stuff that they wanted in the National Archives. It was to get... Yeah, that's his sure, supporters that sure went away, didn't it? You yeah, it was to get that. his supporters to do something crazy, to actually bring guns, to actually do, I mean, how many guns did they pull from the January 6th? You you have guys that are armed to the teeth. Even the even the proud boys. They left their guns in their hotel room. That's not that's not a group of people who intend to take over the government. What about the bombs that were supposed to be there were some explosives yeah, right never, there next to Kamala or some shit? Never never happened. Never never happened. So I mean, it's it's just ridiculous when you think about when you think about how brainwashed a certain segment of the American populace is. I mean, if you look at the if you look at the left right now, they are the side they are on the side of big business and the war machine. Period. <laughs> they are supporting the war in Ukraine, and big business can get away with anything. Jeffrey Epstein allowed to do all the banking in the world after he had been arrested. For molesting a minor. Where's your boy Easy? Yeah. Easy. No more banking for Easy. Yeah, and they, he didn't do are, anything. They are doing everything they can. To he didn't do anything. Easy. He came out and said abortion is wrong. And all of a sudden he can't. 78% of he can't do any banking. in New York are aborted. Yeah. yeah. He said a lot of shit. I mean, the, the biggest. The, the biggest he, he was fine until he said something about the Jews. Yeah. The biggest, uh, but it, here's the problem, though. What he said was 100% true. He didn't say a lie. He said what he said was 100% true. If you look at current Hollywood and who controls what gets made, what doesn't get made in Hollywood, they are Jewish. Is that in itself a problem? I don't know. That may not be a problem, but it's 100% true. Correct. He didn't say a lie, so. Again, but because he attacked the wrong people, he can no longer do banking. Well, maybe maybe he should start going after little girls, and then he could get his banking rights back. Well, there's a lot of memes going around over the, the January 6th shit, right? But yeah. we still don't know who was on the list, Epstein's list. Oh, yeah. It, it, we don't know who's it, on the flight logs. Well, here's the thing. We do know exactly who's on the list. All the people who... Everybody that is in power right now was on the list. They were all involved. And that's why you can't see the list. You can't see the list because they don't want to point picture... Yeah, they don't how, want to point, how can they prosecute somebody and not tell you what their crime was? You know, Or not... Or who the victims were. Or, or, or not convict any of the people that actually committed the crime. Now, they, con they convicted her for providing young ladies to... Um, Older men, right? Who are but the they, older men? They didn't convict any of the older men. Now, this is going to be one of those things. Uh, this is going to be one of those famous government things where it's going to be sixty years from now. Yeah. after they're all dead, you know, forty years from now when they're all dead, they're going to be like, "Oh my God, can you believe that Bill Clinton?" When they put out the rest of the when JFK they put out, tapes, when they put them all out, then you're going to be like, "Holy shit, I can't believe how corrupt the government is." And the new government, your new democratically elected government, is going to go. But that's not us. That was them. We don't do that kind of shit. We're smarter. We're not. Yeah, we're caught. smarter. They're not on an island. They're in a warehouse in Queens. So if you, um, so Trump's not coming back. I mean, you don't think so? It, it's possible that his ego's that big, but I think the smart thing to do would be like, yeah, I'm gonna run for president, and then when it actually comes time for running for president, that he's like, yeah, I'm kind of too old for this shit. I'm gonna let DeSantos have it because. 
he, he has the capability of making so much money right now by pretending that he's going to run right. for president. Yeah. So I don't know why he would want, I mean, I don't know why he would want to actually run for president because the, the, the real government that is in power behind the scenes, um, they're still going to be there. So the same people that told him, the same people told him that you can't get out of fucking Iraq, the same people that, uh, green lighted the, the Russian gate, the same people that, that did all that bullshit to him are still going to be there. So they're still going to be plotting behind his back that he can do nothing about. So why in the fuck would you want to be president other than to just be able to say, fuck you, I did it. I'm president again. But still, why would you want to do that? He lost so much money as president because he, here's the thing. He lost tons of money to be president of the United States because he tried to do things legally. So he disavowed himself from corporations and all that stuff and gave all that, put all that stuff in his son's name and did, did all the things because he wanted to be a legal president. And they still came after him because he wasn't towing their line. The reality is Trump's the first person in... I can't even think how... It, Trump is the first person to be elected president in my lifetime that has not been part of the establishment. Because even Obama was part of the establishment. Do you, so, think he, do you think he actually was elected president second term? I do believe that he was elected. Yeah, he had to have been. Because, again, no way he got more votes than Obama. There is no possible way that Joe Biden got more votes than Obama. He got 80 million votes. How do you get 80 million votes and only have 10,000 followers on Twitter? So do you not think the exact same thing is going to happen this next time? It, it most certainly could happen again. I mean, they're, they're I mean, already talking at, about... Look at the Rio, Rio de Janeiro stuff right now. Well, they're already talking about... Uh, they're already talking about ballot stuffing already. So, could it happen again? It could. It could possibly happen again. But... I don't think that... I don't think people left or right are going to allow it to happen again. Because your, your demographics just don't work this time. So, during the Trump campaign... You could have said, well, you know, uh, you could have said, well, all the, all the Hispanic vote and all the black vote in America, that's Democratic vote. But they've already polled those, and those poll numbers suck for the Democrats. Like, they're losing those. Like, even AOC can't keep her seat. She's going to lose that fucking seat because her constituents, I mean, that's, that is the one thing about, that is the one interesting thing about liberals is liberals will give Liberals will give anything a chance. Like, they'll give anybody a chance. If, if John comes out tomorrow and he says, you know, free education for everybody and abort all the babies you want, and if he, if he pulls the liberal line, liberals will be like, that's our guy. We're going to elect him because he's pulling the line. He knows how we feel. But they usually only let that happen once. And then the next time, they just don't show up to the polls because John fucked us. He's in the war. He's getting all this money from all these special interest corporations. Fuck him. So are we going to war? Or in the next two years, is whoever the president going to pull us out of that? It depends on who's president. If the, if, the, if the Democrats hold control, if the Democrats stay in the House and the Senate, and they, they hold majority control, then yes, we are going to war with the Russians. And immediately, as soon as we go to war with Russia, we're going to go to war with the Chinese. Can we fight those two fronts? It depends on how those it depends on how those wars are generated. If if we feel if the American people feel like we've been wronged, like the Russian one, the Russian one can happen really easy. If if Joe Biden winked winked at the president or whatever they call him in Poland, like just winked at Poland, was like, gotcha. The poles would already be in this fight. They would already, I mean, every piece of equipment that we're giving to the Ukrainians goes through Pol Poland. Every mercenary, I'm sorry, every, uh, I, you're still a mercenary even if even though you're not getting paid. Every person that goes to fight in Ukraine goes through Poland. Like it's, it is the rail hub to get into, yeah. into Ukraine. Yeah. The, the, the Polish, the Polish military is just like, what's up? Let us get in this fight. We're not letting them get in the fight because we are afraid of a nuclear confrontation. 
we believe that if NATO, if well, yes, NATO is supporting the war effort in Ukraine, but if NATO forces actually go boots on the ground and start fighting the Russians, the Russians' only response will be a nuclear weapon. Is that a real fear? Is it? It's conflicting. If someone pops one off over there. I don't think, I don't think, I don't think that the Russian military would allow nuclear ballistic war to happen. But I do believe that if, I do believe that if tactically it became unavoidable that they would use a battlefield nuclear weapon, like a cruise missile or something to stop the flow. But not ICBMs. Not ICBMs. I don't think Putin has the. I don't think Putin has the capability to pull that trigger. I believe that the, the oligarchy and the and the Russian military at the time of, let's go, full nuclear war. I don't think they would allow it. I think they would be like, mm, no, bro. So do we care if somebody, pops one off over there? Do we care? Not really. I we mean, don't because it's not the, coming here. The wouldn't reality that, is, wouldn't that kind of end it? Well, the reality is we don't we don't give a shit about Ukraine. Somebody, I mean, whoever pops one off first over there, everybody goes home. There's going to be. Is that the end of it like Japan was? Maybe. Maybe. I I mean, Ukraine, if, if, uh, if that is what, if that's what is necessary in order for Russia to go home, if, if it's, if that is what's necessary for, uh, for them to pop a new, like, let's say, I don't know, let's just say, Poland joins the fray, and they start pushing Russian troops back across the Dunbar, a Dumbas, and it looks like Russian troop, it looks like Polish and Ukrainian troops are going to enter Russia, like they're pushing the actual border. Russia uses a nuke, and wipes those troops out, and then it's like, uh, we quit. As long as the border stays the same, we quit. Then yes, I think everybody would come to the table and go, "Well, fuck, man, that was crazy," and then there will be some sort of negotiated peace. Ukraine is expendable, as far as global politics is concerned. And I know if you have a Ukrainian flag on your Facebook page, and I support Ukraine, good for you. But unless you're over there actually doing anything, you don't really support Ukraine. Um, but we are using Ukraine as a pawn. The whole point of this is to get the Russians locked down into a fight that they. That if it ha- if if Ukraine is anything like Iraq and Afghanistan, where they where the Russians have to spend billions and billions of dollars and sink large amounts of equipment and and personnel into this fight, we will be happy. We want so to, they can sell more arms and well, no, because we want to degenerate the Russians to the point where they have to join the world organization and become part of the new world order. Isn't uh, aren't there? Their ruble or whatever is backed by five grams of gold or a uh, well, five Russia, a Russia gram. and China, Russia and China have both been buying gold at a at an infinite rate to back their currency because they want countries to which is what we overthrew everywhere else for. Yes, correct. The problem the problem is again, it's Russia and China. Like, you, let's say, let me let me think of something. If if Britain, if the British were like, hey guys. We're going to eat nothing but spam for the next two years, and we're going to buy as much gold as we can in order to make our currency the number one currency in the world. I would be like, fuck, we got to worry about Britain because they don't manipulate their currency. Russia and China both manipulate their currency. So even if it, even if they do say, hey, the ruble is now backed by, or the, you know, whatever the Chinese currency is, it's now backed by gold. You can. You can count on us. Well, we can count on you to say that it doesn't matter if it's backed by gold if you are still manipulating how much it's worth, right? Because that's the thing they did when they started buying gold. They're like, we're going to buy all this gold, but only at this price. And it hurts the market initially because people are like, oh, shit. Yeah, that's cool. I'm going to sell my gold to the Russians. But in the long run, they manipulate their currency too much and it's not really, it won't really ever, even if they have fucking piles of gold, and it won't ever really be backed by the gold. So do you know spam is actually one of the more expensive? It's not for the poor anymore. It's very expensive. Is it? Yes. What, what do you mean by expensive? It's though? tripled in price. Well, I mean. It tripled in price before all the bullshit was going on. Um, 
Well, I know, I do know that you can't, that spam, that uh, just like if you go to get spam now. They have several flavors. They have all kinds yeah. of flavors now. It's not just spam in a can. So we'll go ahead and end this one. Okay. And uh, we'll close with, are you aware that in downtown Los Angeles and surrounding areas, a bunch of those high-rise skyscrapers are actually oil rigs? I am aware of that. I believe I, I probably saw the same thing you did. That Recently. Find somebody showing you where the yeah. high-rises are. They have something similar in... Uh, they this, have some, this was all around like La Brea tar pits and shit, which would make sense, I guess. They have something similar in New York City where the... Uh, a bunch of those buildings are like CIA well, they have sites and shit. They actually have fake buildings in New York City for the uh, for the subway system. It's where all the ventilation comes from mm-hmm. from the subway system, but they just make it look like it's a real building. Yeah, London and around yeah. Paris, same shit. Yeah. 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 All right, leave them with some hope. Contrary to what everybody is telling you, your life is actually getting better. You you live a better life than you would have if you were here a hundred years ago. Um, but because you live a softer, more comfortable life, you tend you tend to worry about things that you don't need to worry about. Like, should we be worried about nuclear war in Europe? Nope, because nothing you can do about it. If someone decides to push the button, there's nothing you can do about it. So all the worrying doesn't do you any good. So be happy with your life, make good friends, buy a can of Spam in case we have nuclear winter and you have to live in your basement for six months, you can at least be eating Spam. Uh, But, I mean, life is not as bad as everybody pretends it is. You have a damn thousand dollar, you have a damn device in your pocket that literally could get you to the moon if you applied yourself properly. And tracks you and tells your government everything you say. Yeah, but I mean, it also it also you know tells you where you're at and helps you find new stores and you're being manipulated into inaction. That is true. And there's a kid right now. There's there's some man. But that's in, not. You're we're giving a hopeful. There's job. some man. There's some man in Syria who's just been bombed to shit. Yet he still gets up every morning and goes and makes bread and sells that bread so he can afford to buy a pair of sandals that has to last him five years. Your shit does not fucking is not anything compared to. What most yeah. people around the world have. You want to see amazing? Look up, uh, look up Pakistan tractor tire repair. Holy shit! <laughs> they, the stuff that those guys are doing over there to repair tractor tires is just amazing. It's also, I don't. Those guys all have to have cancer, but <laughs> yeah, I don't think they live beyond 45, 50 years. Anyways, so you're gonna live longer than that. So be happy in the fact that you don't have to repair tractor tires in Pakistan. It's choices, man. Let them, they're going to manipulate you into nothing or you're going to do something. Just, they no longer matter, so we no longer mind. That's true. All right. Give them some outro music. Cut that shit off. Something good. Is that Pantera? Just trying to, it's, it's got a lot of swing on it, you know? It's got a lot of... Well, plus the where it's clamped on, it's right in his knee. Can we... I don't mind that because it's holding me in place. <laughs> okay. But it's got a lot of... You want it to be tightened? Can you? How do you do that? Yeah. Do you want me to build up Oh, some, no, don't don't worry about that. Yeah, you got to get tools here. out. It's right here. Do you want oh. me to rig up some seat belts from the side? That would be cool. So like when you're in the on the you ship and you're bumped? And, uh, yep. Get some... Stitch it and put a little clamp on it. That's what I'm talking about, Yeah. <laughs> or we could do those. Uh, we could do those helicopter retention lanyards. Oh, you know, actually, you know what'd be even better, John? You should get two sex wings. I have two sex wings that you put right here, and then we could just sit in the sex wings, and it doesn't matter how the building is. Tighten it to your liking. Thank you, thank you, sir. Mm-hmm. God, it wasn't tight at all. There, that's better. That's a, maybe I don't know. I like it here. Wait, Feel it now. There you go. That's a little better. Let me. Are get you recording? On it. Yeah. Just put go. all this shit at the back end. Yeah. Like, don't go. don't cut nothing out. But uh, you see what I'm saying? If we were sitting in sex wings, we would be level to the world, not level to the building. So we found the podcast we did with James. Oh, okay, yeah. Right? So I think his channel, I think we were on there before the channel got killed. Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm thinking. So we found a copy of it, and we put it back up. I'm surprised you didn't have a copy of it. I never, I never take copies of anything that I'm in. So we've been, we've been pulling anything that has us in it, and people are, they're just loving it, right? And this dude's like, man, it's, it's really cool, but 
uh, whoever was breathing loud, I just couldn't. I don't know. And I'm like, <sighs> and I'm like, well, I would totally refund you, except you didn't fucking pay anything for mm-hmm. it. And I, I also, I went to your channel to check it out to see an example of how you would have done it. And lo and behold, I mean, you of course, doing you had nothing. I mean, maybe somebody had OPD. What is it? Is it OPD, the breathing disease? OCPD. Something like that. Yeah, maybe somebody had some of that shit. You know, you don't know. Or maybe somebody was on a ventilator in the background. You never know. That would be kind of cool if we had a ventilator in here just going. I want an iron lung. <laughs> just going. Sit over here, go. So I want I want one of those iron lungs. That'd look really cool sitting in the corner. I, I'm actually I'm actually one hundred percent surprised you don't have one. I'm surprised you don't have an iron lung with an Egyptian mummy inside of it. So there's you can get functioning iron lungs. So we were yeah. looking we were looking on I've Google. Seen, I've seen those. I was looking on Google. Somebody had one up for sale, right? There, there is actually maybe not anymore, but I know like Three years ago, there's a dude still. I watched a video of a lawyer who's still in an iron lung. He's still in there. He's still alive. So couldn't find anything. And Carrie, Carrie Brown said, "Oh, check this other." And it's like Wendango or something. I don't know what search engine it was. But as soon as I typed it in, fucking hundreds of them around the world for sale. I don't know why Google's so against iron lungs. Uh, Probably because you're. Are you up against the board, bro? I would assume that Google's against iron lungs because it's a medical piece of medical equipment, and they don't want you medical equipping anything. Do I have to go over here now? Google. Uh, Google is part of the new. Google's part of the new Holocaust. They want all the. They want all the. Uh, the weak to not survive. Didn't you know somebody that was in an iron lung? Uh, no. Had polio or something. Polio. My dad had polio. I don't know what you just did, but I'm pulling a lot more this way now. Yeah, I know. I, I, you shifted I think the, the entire building. I think the building is heavier over there now. I'm cramping in my leg, holding myself in place. Have you seen Steve-O's new show? They just drive around like in a rider truck? Oh, and do, yeah, interviews? It's pretty good. I mean, it's not as good as him crawling across <laughs> a cable over an alligator pit with a chicken strapped to his butt. But pretty good. I guess you can't be, you can't do that stuff forever. And I think he found Jesus. So, do you think he found Jesus? Or do you think Jesus found him? Jesus is always with you, John. <laughs>